This pro wrestling right here, man, this pro wrestling's in our soul. This is what we was created to do, man. Tell me a story you've heard it many times before. Look into my eyes, you've seen them. You've opened up the door. Show This company has been my life. Ring of Honor is how I feed my family. When you walk down that dark alley, brother, you want to know who's got your back. And I'm telling you, that's family. That's family. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, up, man, 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 up, man, up. man up. My dad is crazy. Fire, my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> contest is for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. And now we take a look at the rules. Each wrestler has three rope breaks to stop submission holds and pinfalls. After a wrestler exhausts his rope breaks, submission and pin attempts on or under the ropes by the opponent are considered legal. No close fits, punches to the face permitted. Open-handed slaps or chops to the face are permitted. Punches to the rest of the body are allowed, excluding low blows. The first use of a closed fist to the face receives a warning. The second use of a closed fist to the face results in disqualification. If the decision goes down to our judges, we have three esteemed Ring of Honor judges at ringside. Introducing first, Jerry Lynn, BJ Whitmer, and Dean Malenko. Welcome everyone to the Jay Briscoe Celebration of Life. We are here in Fresno, California. We will take it to Justin Roberts to introduce our first competitor in our Pure Championship bout. Introducing the challenger weighing 180 pounds, Hakane Shino. One of the things Ring of Honor was all about, Caprice Coleman, was talent from all over the world. Jay Briscoe used to thrive on facing the hottest up and coming talent. I think back to his matches with guys like Shingo when Shingo was first breaking in. And, and this is someone that he had his eye on. Yeah, when you look at a Ring of Honor, how Ring of Honor had relationships with New Japan and even CMLL, when they brought in people from overseas, that was a highlight for people like Jay Briscoe because they got to show the talent that Ring of Honor had. That was literally worldwide. It's exciting here, Agane Shino making his Ring of Honor debut against the only, the first and only two-time pure champion. And his opponent from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 199 pounds, he is the Ring of Honor pure champion, Wheeler Yuna. We want to keep things light. We want to celebrate the life of Jay Briscoe. I remember back in the, the bubble tapings, the pandemic days, where Jay Briscoe first saw Wheeler Yuta. 
Yuta was about 15, 20 pounds lighter, but he pointed to Yuta. He said, this kid's got a big future in front of him. He, he's fulfilled that prophecy so far, Caprice. And that's what Ring of Honor is about, man. Building people up, seeing what's inside of them, and being able to take them under your wing. And you see right there on his left arm there, uh, Yuta has Jay. Probably everybody having that tie tonight to show the respect to Jay Briscoe. And the pure title is on the line. There's nothing like the pure title in the world. We have it here at Ring of Honor. The pure championship has been held by athletes like Samoa Joe, Jay Lethal, Brian Danielson. More recently, Daniel Garcia, the man that you'd have defeated and dethroned to capture the title. But Shino coming in by way of Big Japan from the DDT promotion as well. And it really caught people's eyes in his bout against yep. Kenny Omega yep. back on AEW Dark. You know, you see these matches against like people like Kenny Omega, and you wonder uh, what these guys are about. And then you take away all the strike and all the kicking, and you just put the wrestling on there. You get to see what these guys are made of. And someone trained by Takamichi Noku. <laughs> You're right. Come on. And that's Shino, and of course, the great pedigree, Drew Gulak, the trainer of Wheeler Yuta. But he's in the Blackpool Combat Club. He, he's wrestling almost every day with guys like Brian Danielson, with the Ring of Honor World Champion, who we'll see later, Claudio Castagnoli. Blackpool Combat Club, they continue to make each other better. And a wrist lock continues here. And what you'll see in these pure title matches, one of the underrated aspects of Jay Briscoe's game was this technical wrestling world. There's a focus on the body part, Caprice. And right now, uh, Yuta is focused on that wrist control there. As long as you have control of that wrist, oh. Control of that wrist, you can tell the body where to go to. Those kicks that Shino is throwing to the leg, he's trying to tighten up that thigh muscle there. And it might not have a lot of effect now, but it's definitely gonna have an effect later in the match. And you gotta wonder, will he be, will Shino be accustomed to the rope break scenario? Almost caught Ooh. himself one. Instead delivers a beautiful kick right through the stern. Interesting to note of the championships Jay Briscoe held 13 times over and current Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. Twice over Ring of Honor World Champion. The Pure Championship won that eluded him, Caprice. Well, if you know Jay Briscoe, man, he's gonna start off a match punching straight in the mouth. <laughs> right. Oh. Uh, he's staying after the leg here on, on Yuta, and uh, I like somebody that goes in with a game plan, because I like, oh, he brushed him right off. Oh, catches the right, and it's an angle slam, a right angle slam from Wheeler Yuta. Going for the cover here, one, two, in the center of the ring. Wow, it was pretty close, two minutes in here. It's quick thinking by Yuta as well. Now Yuta attacking the body part uh, to add a high impact move so early in the match. Now Caprice, he's really looking for the knees. What have you seen so far from Shino that makes the knee a smart play for Yuta? Well, you see those kicks that uh, Shino was throwing. I mean, it, you can tell by the way that Yuta's going for his legs that those kicks definitely had an effect. And so Yuta's game plan is to try to take the strength out of those legs, take the strength out of those kicks, take away a lot of his offense. Two count there from referee Mike Posey and a nice bridge, yeah. beautiful bridge. That bridge adding so much more torque. Wow. And that stance, but it's Shino looking to fight through, trying to get from underneath, trying to peel the ankle apart. Crowd rallying behind Shino here. And the bridge again. The pressure. It's close to the ropes. Now, but here in the pure match, Caprice. That's what you're saying, first rope break. Shino has used his first rope break. You have to understand that you just set that up for that. And he's going to hold on until he did it. And did Shino intentionally grab it? Realize the rules later. Well, that's the, the champion's Ooh, advantage here for Yuta. Yuta's competed in pure matches. He was in the, the pure tournament oh. back in 2020 to revitalize the championship. Since then, he's won the title twice. He, he knows the rules inside and out. And so many champions. Whoa, nice suplex. We should use that you rope break to their advantage. And some of the techniques for first-time viewers or viewers that are not as familiar, oftentimes you'll see wrestlers like Yuta or even Daniel Garcia, right. the man he defeated for the title, apply submissions intentionally close to the ropes. Yep, make him expel those rope breaks and then you can tap him out on the ropes. And his forearms connect and you will not see, not likely see a close fist as Yuta and Chino are exchanging forearms. Need of the midsection there. They're not close fists, but those forearms are very close to the jaw. And look at this stretch here. Almost a gory stretch. He's tearing at the deltoids. And the pec muscles. 
And with each flex, you're absolutely right. That separation across the center of the chest. Look at him flexing it. Yes, yeah, tearing out the ligaments and the joints. And every time you try to apply something from there, you have less strength. He's like neutralizing the chest. Oh, wow. God. Takes away the effect of these strikes. Forearms delivering here. Mm. Thrust kick. And Sheena with an opening. Off the ropes he goes, charging in. Wrist caught. It's to it. Yuta trapping him. They wrist trapped into a high, yeah. high Cobra twist here. And into the obliques. You can see how much further that shoulder's going back now. But Willard has applied on Shino. That, uh, that shoulder's going back way far back now. He has control, total control. The, the alligator's mouth is full open. And what I like here is very tactical. He's making Shino move with him by his body positioning. He's going to force another break. Oh, and Seti pulls him toward the middle. Yeah. And, and that's the strategy. Shino's going for that. Yeah, that's the second one. Shino has used his second road break. Yeah. And the crowd. I think the crowd is getting to understand what these road breaks are doing. These road breaks are dangerous. They certainly are. The pure, the pure division is one of the most unique elements of Ring of Honor. And, and when those road breaks are gone, the drama heightens because Pins and submissions can happen anywhere in the ring. What do you think about it, Rick Abani? Every time Shino tried to get out of a move, he used the rope break, and that would be ineffective when he exhausts the ring, guys. And now second rope on the inside is Shino, and Yuta battling for a position here. Forearm across the jaw from Shino, but it's a shot to the oblique again from Yuta. Shino sent down. Yuta, now second rope on the inside, follows him up! Wow! A long way down, and he hit the rope twice. He hit the apron on the way down, and hit the floor. It's landing twice. Bad landings. And Chino on the apron here, international star, making his Ring of Honor debut. And oh! Acai moves up to the outside. And both of these men giving it all in this special Jay Briscoe celebration of life. It was on Tuesday, January 17th, the world lost Jay Briscoe, leaving behind Gannon Gracie, Jay Lee, and his beautiful wife, Ashley. And here tonight, we are celebrating under the Ring of Honor banner, a celebration of the best professional wrestling on the planet. Shino going to the top. It is Shino here. Big missile drop kick. And Yuta now. He's out on his feet, Caprice. Shoot. Yuta's in a lot of trouble here in the corner. No man's land. And Shino's wide open. Yuta caught him. Oh, he caught him. And seatbelt, yep. bridge, two. Oh. I was going to say he's holding on to him. It's very smart game plan by you as well. Sometimes when you get somebody running as fast as Shino's running, when you get hold of him, you don't let go. And Yuta on the doorstep now on the precipice of retaining the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. And our opening contest here, the Jay Briscoe celebration of live in the nobody hall for Yuta. They don't call that high risk for nothing. And that pool was empty on the way down. Let's see if Shino has enough gas tank in his gas tank to capitalize on this mistake you'd have made. Ducks the right, and Shino! Wow, beautiful kick. Yuta's out on his feet. Oh, oh driver! Takamishi! One, two! Uchinoku driver gets two! Wow. And you mentioned it very yeah. early on in the match, Caprice. Who would be able to apply it better than someone taught by the man himself, the inventor of the Michinoku driver? Incredible. Did you see his neck on that? Did you see Yuta's neck? Oh, that driver, wow! It was like a stack of dimes going haywire. And Shino now. Now, this is interesting because at this point in the match, Shino clearly worn down. Yep. And Caprice, if he could land another one of those, I think it'd be over. Well, well that's what happens to a lot of the younger guys. You know, they, they hit a big impact move and they give it all they got, and it's not the end. They don't know where to go. But Shino's trying something else. But they might have wasted too much time with the champion. Yuta is back up. Too close to the body, too much strength inside of him. Rolled up to a package. One, two, and two. Two count there. I'll tell you what, it was that ankle lace that was a little too far back. And a big kick sends you to the outside. Rebounds, rewinds in, down to one knee. Trapped on the ankle. Rolls him through. Two. Two only there. Sheena swing and a miss. Ooh. Yuta plants him. Going back up to the top. Could be looking for that dive again. This time, Hit three it. quarters across the ring. 
two. Just a two count. And Chino, can he hang on? You to go. Pedal to the metal. Trying to force a referee stoppage here. Reset position. Nowhere to go. Dead center. He's out. The winner of this match and still Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Euler Yuda. The judge is a non-factor here tonight. Just over nine and a half minutes. Wheeler Yuta picks up the victory via submission. It was great to see Shino here in a Ring of Honor ring, but Wheeler Yuta re retaining the championship tonight, Capri. And I like seeing Wheeler Yuta here showing uh, different layers of himself, using a different submission move, showing he can win in different ways, not just one submission to look up for. It's if I can trap you, I'm gonna beat you, and that's what the pure title is about. Coming off a huge win, the Code of Honor is adhered to. A huge win at Final Battle. Retaining the title tonight, Wheeler Yuta, the Blackpool Combat Club, remains your Ring of Honor Pure Champion. So it's rare you get to meet <laughs> truly extraordinary individuals in your life. <sighs> Authentic people. <sighs> people who love with all their heart. <sighs> who embrace everything <sighs> a million percent. in love unconditionally. <laughs> and that's what Jay Briscoe meant to a lot of us. <sighs> you know, the fans of Briscoe Brothers are just an unstoppable tag team that, you know, will not be denied. But to us, Briscoe Brothers means something different. If you knew Jay, or if you know Mark, they are your brother. I was fortunate enough to watch Jay grow from a wild kid who'd do anything in the Northeast to one of the best performers in the world, to an amazing father. And I think it just best sums up why this hurts so much. <sighs> you know, my brother wasn't born perfect. <sighs> but he was filled with love. And I think that's why we'll miss him the most. I love you, Mark. My love to the Pew family. I'll pray for them girls until they're out of harm's way. God bless you. I met Jay, Jay Briscoe, really, really early on in my career. Um, it was 2010. It, it was right when I got to Ring of Honor. Um, this was the company that I wanted to work for uh, since I started training to be a wrestler. And, uh, and Jay and Mark Briscoe were two of the guys that I looked up to and, and idolized uh, completely. And, and, and getting to share a ring with them, um, getting to share a locker room with them became so much more than just me getting to work with a, and meet a guy that I idolized. He became an incredible friend. Jay, uh, Jay did a lot for me professionally. There was a time in my career where I was kind of first learning the ropes of what it was like to be in main events for a company like Ring of Honor. And Jay believed in me. Uh, I, I remember winning the Ring of Honor championship for the first time. And a lot of people don't know this, but I was not supposed to be champion for, for very long. And Jay had just gotten to know me the past couple years. And, and he said that he didn't think that was a good idea. He said he thinks that we need to make this Adam Cole guy special. And I automatically became special because I got to share the ring with someone as good and as talented as Jay Briscoe. But why? 
aside from the fact that this is crushing to so many people because of what he meant to pro wrestling, the biggest reason this is so soul crushing is whether you met Jay Briscoe for one day, whether you've known him for 10 years, he treated you like family. I have never heard Jay Briscoe complain about anything. I've never heard Jay Briscoe complain about anybody. He never talked trash on other people. He was all about lifting everybody up all the time. Anytime he's in that locker room, anytime I saw him, always had a huge smile on his face. Always was having the time of his life. He was an incredible friend, an incredible brother, an incredible husband, and an incredible father. I, every single year for opening day football, I would go to his house with the entire Briscoe family, and they took me in and treated me like, like I was one of them. Uh, and I, I, I cherish, really, really cherish those times. I cherish, I cherish that I got to, uh, <clears throat> I cherish that I got to know Jay Briscoe at all. Jay, I love you. I know you're looking down on us right now, telling us to, to man up. And I am sending nothing but love and compassion for you, Mark, for your wife, for your children, for your entire family. Just know the impact that Jay has made on so many of us all across the world will be something that none of us will ever, ever forget. I love you, Jay. It's like the story that never ends, man. The Jay Briscoe, Adam Cole saga continues. It's borderline poetic where we've ended up, Jay. But did you expect anything less? Jay, you know that with every fiber of my being, I hate you. I hate the air that you breathe. I hate the ground that you walk on. And I know the feeling's mutual. You wouldn't change a thing. That's why it's only appropriate that a final battle in the main event we settled the score. You know, I've been in a lot of wars in this company over the years, but New York City, final battle, this is the one. Jake Briscoe. Throw all the rules out the window. Adam Cole. Throw Mike Bennett, throw Maria, throw Matt Taven out the window. For that Ring of Honor World Championship. It's you and me, one-on-one, -on -one, boy. In a fight without honor. I'm walking in the champion. I damn sure ain't losing this dumb bitch. This all started back in Philadelphia when I won the Ring of Honor World Championship. Jay Briscoe now knows that it's time, Nigel. Because your daddy told you, if Adam Cole wins like a man, you shake his hand like a man. Jay Briscoe is an absolute man of his word. He's never done. What the? And then I showed you exactly what I thought of you. What the hell was that? After I beat you, and don't allow you to walk out of New York City. Your dad will look you right in the eyes and say how proud he is of you. But I'll know and you'll know deep down in your heart of hearts that he's a liar. You wanna talk about my family, man? You have nothing to be proud of. You wanna talk about my dad? Throw all these shots at me, Adam Cole. Hey, keep shooting, brother. Keep shooting, I'm right here, baby. This is a fight without honor, which means I don't give a damn if I kill your ass in the middle of that ring, Adam Cole. Jay, I can promise you that in New York City at Final Battle, I will leave you with absolutely nothing. And me, I'll leave with everything. Hey, viewer discretion's advised. I got the war, y'all. It might get ugly out there. It's your own fault, Cole. You dug your own grave, boy. Time to lay down, bitch.
Wrestling the ground stand, Adam McCall, baby! I was holding in my excitement, Kevin Kelly. I know you were. You were percolating here oh, at ringside. I was. Not even gonna ask for a handshake. This man is 100% pure concentration right now. Well, this is the one that they put on the poster. This is the one that sold the building out. This is the one that has everybody on pay-per-view talking about it. Oh. The two seats that he bought in reserve oh, what for a, Mr. and Mrs. Frisco. Well, we all know why they're not here, and that's because Adam Cole sucker punched. He kicked Papa Frisco in the back of the head. Come on. Come on, you were Papa there. Papa Frisco deserved it. He didn't have to say what he said. Yeah, but he hit him from behind, as is Adam Cole's way. I don't think Adam Cole meant for Pop Frisco to turn his head like he did. Inside Terminal 5, Adam Cole looks to become a two-time Ring of Honor World Champion. He issued the challenge to make this a fight without honor. Adam Cole made that challenge. Jay Briscoe quickly accepted. He casts an eye up back up the ramp because he knows that the title that he wants and the man who wears it is on his way. to this matchup. Jay Briscoe, and I'll argue this with anybody, Jay Briscoe is the most credible world champion on the planet today. You're darn right. All right, champion and challenger in the ring. All the referees are here. We've got to get at least through the introductions. And with that, Bobby Cruz. Following contest is your final battle, Mean Ethan. It is scheduled for one fall to a finish. It is a fight without honor, and it is for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Introducing first to my right, the challenger. Wrestling out of Panama City, Florida. Weighing 210 pounds, he is representing the kingdom, Adam Cole. His opponent to my left, wrestling out of Sandy Fort Delaware, weighing 229 pounds, he is the Ring of Honor World Champion, Jay Briscoe! our championship tail to tape. A long journey for Jay Briscoe to get to the world title. It ended his first reign due to injury. Cole won the tournament. And then Briscoe recaptured that title in September to become the second two-time champion in Ring of Honor history. Now he's going to do everything he can to knock the loop. Well, when you have not been beaten in two years, it must give you tremendous confidence each time out. Yes and no. Of course, you're going to get the confidence because you're, you're getting on that winning streak. You know what it's going to take to win a match. Oh. Now, 
but you also know that eventually that streak has to come to But is this the strategy that Cole should do? Poking the bear? Poking Absolutely. the bear. Look what he's done over the last year and a half to Jay Briscoe. Psychological warfare. We thought it was over. We thought this eight. Wait Whoa, a minute. It's going to be over. Jay Driller. Oh, it's over now. Jay Driller. One, two, eight. Oh, my gosh. Almost the fastest world title match in Ring of Honor history. Right? Oh, my goodness. Cole to the outside. The outside's not going to help him. His safest place may be in the ring. Todd Sinclair's one job, one job in this match is to count the three or to be there when the man submits. Otherwise, it will go to a finish. Bobby Cruz, you better get the heck out of there. No one safe around there. Chairs are starting to fly. Oh boy. Well, a table that almost came into play in the match earlier on between Unbreakable Michael Elgin and Tommaso Ciampa, who might be fired, fans. We haven't gotten an update. Now is definitely going to be at least attempted to be used by Jay Briscoe. He's already hit one Jay Driller. Oh, he just stomped on his face and chest. Take a look. Wow. The impact as Cole is driven. 230 pounds and Jay Briscoe stomping down on top of the Did former champion. you see like how Cole's head smacked against the table as it broke? My goodness now. Did he come to the ring with that? Yes, it was in his pocket. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. This is about revenge. This is about kicking my dad in the back of the head. This is about making my dad a liar. Oh my goodness, a chair just the, creased right across the head of Jay Briscoe. The chair that has Mr. Briscoe on it. Insult to injury. Well, Jay Briscoe even said in comments recorded, viewer discretion is advised because it's gonna get ugly out there. Going on Adam here. Cole purchased two no, ringside no, no. seats. No, no, no! Had them labeled for Briscoe's parents. Oh, no, and he just... Oh, my goodness. To the fans watching at home on pay-per-view. Parental discretion is mine. You got two men that just hate each other so much, and they, they have so much pride that they will do anything it takes to win the ROH World Championship, including stapling a piece of paper to a man's forehead. So now, with that paper, oh my goodness. Still stuck to his head. Very unlike Adam Cole. Now here comes the steel chair. This is getting ugly quick. We saw it at Ladder War, yeah. what these two would do. We thought it was over at Ladder War. Running Yakuza kick on Adam Cole, the former world champion. Those staples remain attached to Jay Briscoe's head. Uh, 
uh, local ambulance to get them on call here. One or two of these men are going to be in a New York City hospital. Oh man, Adam Cole just got sent face first into that steel chair. That was wedged in the corner. Tried to put his hands up. Go to the replay here. Head first. Just trying anything he could to desperately ease some of the collision, but there was nothing he could do. Choking him. Jay Briscoe looked to end this championship match in almost record-setting fashion. But we might be settling in for a long war. We sure will. Thousands of streamers thrown throughout the course of the night all under the ring. Here was Bobby Cruz's replacement table. It's not looking good for that. Literally pulling oh, staples out of his goodness. skull. And you have to say the advantage in a style of match like this goes to Jay Briscoe. Which goes back to it was Cole that asked for the fight without honor. The words were barely out of Adam Cole's mouth when Jay Briscoe said, Yes, I accept. And I always wondered why Adam Cole would ask for that match, knowing that the kingdom is not here. Right. Knowing that the kingdom is 7,000 miles away. Adam Cole's smart, man. He is so smart. That's why I bet the house on him. He's got something up his sleeve. Now with that table, now wedged in the corner. Breaker. Neck breaker there, Jay Briscoe trying to wipe the blood off of his forehead. Like I said earlier, what we saw at Ladder War, and now with the fight without honor. And this has been an 18 month saga Elbows by the champ. Now. Oh! The chair set up by Cole had come back to hunt him. Oh. It's all legal in this fight without honor. Falcon Arrow through breaking one chair. Cover. There's no way for your body to prepare for that shock. It's bad enough when you hit the mat, but to hit two different chairs, unnatural. And now the Singapore cane, an instrument of torture and discipline. And I'm a guy that felt that my back, my temple, everywhere. It is no fun. Stings. Oh, he did! Cracked him right across the skull, and Jay Briscoe somehow finds a way to kick out. Wow. Like a New York Yankees baseball player. Swung for the fences. But now look at what Cole is doing. After smashing Jay Briscoe's knee with that cane. And there he is, going right after the knee. He knows he wants to, to lock on the figure for a leg lock. Brought him so many victories when he was world champion, before he was world champion. He can 
Oh! He was looking to try oh, to... Oh, did you hear that? Oh, man, was that Cole Skull cracking oh, the steel goodness. ring post? Oh, he was, was going to wrap the legs of Briscoe around the steel. That was sick. He was going to lock that figure four on. We've seen him do that from time to time. But he would be able to hang on all night because there would be no count out. Adam Cole isn't moving. Adam Cole might be out cold underneath the ring. Maybe Todd Sinclair wants to get out there. And yeah, there he is. Going to see, he may have been knocked out. Now I see he's moving. Oh, you never know if he can break a nose, uh, crack an orbital bone. Well, again, he might have just come straight into that. He could have been knocked unconscious. That po oh, no. But instead. Oh, oh no. Cole has been split open. And that's what happened. Oh, that's not good. When Cole hit that ring post, he was split wide open. I now, this is a very serious situation now. As Adam Cole. pouring down the face of Adam Cole after being sent into the ring post. Right, okay, this is smart. Here. And because of that, that amount of a loss of blood, the Athletic Commission's doctor is down here. Smart move here. And they are tending to Adam Cole. I know fans want this to continue, but safety of the wrestlers. They got, they got to stop that cut. Now, now and, and Jay kind of has to let this process happen, or does he? Jay, 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 Jay! And the security that came down with the commission doctor down. Well, they tried. They were trying to. Again, commission protocol states you have to try to come down and stop that flow of blood, but Jay Briscoe wouldn't let it happen. They tried. You can see they wiped it off. And Adam Cole has been in this situation before. Think back a couple of years. And it was that hybrid rules fighting match against Kyle O'Reilly. Cole had taken a kick in the mouth. Tooth had come flying out. Blood poured from the mouth of Adam Cole. The commission doctors were coming down to stop the match. Cole wouldn't let them. Now at this time, Jay Briscoe wouldn't even let that assessment happen. Sent the doctor and the security scurrying because he wants to continue to pour the pressure on here on this fight without honor. And a little difference, though, is where the cut is on the face. Sometimes with the, the mouth or the tooth, it's only going to bleed so much. But when you get hit forehead, top of the head and stuff like that, there's so many blood vessels moving around that it's going to bleed. And then, you know, the heart rate starts to come higher. Blood starts pouring even more. The, the athlete starts to worry more. Right. And that, that's where the danger comes in. You want to get that cut closed as quick as possible. I think the commission doctor, as unpopular as it is, because, you know, let's face it, Adam Cole deserves this beating. You know, I'll even say it. He deserves this beating. But keep it into the, you know, yeah. the realm of professional wrestling. All right, so now focusing on the ring and what is at stake. It's about the Ring of Honor world title. And this fight without honor has been physical, it has been brutal, but it is far from over. Headbutts going after the laceration.
Cole still has some fight in him. He does have some fight in him, and now Cole! Super Kick! Oh, oh! my god! Frisco pulled the table out, and the Super Kick of Cole sends the champion through it! My goodness. Cole still has fight left in him. How quick he is to capitalize. Take a look. The super kick. Met the mark and you can see Frisco crashing through that table. Adam Cole right behind us. Looking to grab the world title belt. Cole taking that world title and again looking to use it as a weapon. When he was champion, he used that title as a weapon on a number of occasions. And that belt's heavy. And that 10 pounds of gold smashed in the face of Jay Briscoe, but he kicks out at two. These guys going on instinct. How many times Adam Cole has swung that title when he was champion? Oh, looking at the title that he loves so much. Cole! Shades of Philadelphia when he captured the title. Florida Key, the bridge, he no, he hasn't done it. Jay Briscoe refuses to stay down. I'm shocked. Super kick to the back of the head, followed up by the Florida Keys. And somehow Jay Briscoe once again kicks out. Saves the world championship. Briscoe slowed and staggered to his feet. Wait a second, though. No. Death Valley Driver! Total chaos here. What does Briscoe have? Well, I've seen that uh, purple bag with the gold rope before. He cracked a few open oh, back in the day, oh, but wait a second. Oh. No, no, no! A rainbow of danger in the middle of the ring. Low blow from Adam Cole. Cole almost in disbelief. Oh, no, my goodness, what brutality! No, he, he kicked out! Can't even describe it, it's so brutal. The, the picture speak for itself. But my God, how Jay Briscoe was able to kick out. Looks like Cole setting him up for the Florida Key. Florida Key. Be very dangerous to himself. Whoa, 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 whoa.
Hall can only look. Jay Driller on the title belt. He has done it. The winner of the fight without honor and still Ring of Honor World Champion, Jay Briscoe. Kevin Kelly, I've seen a lot of gruesome stuff in my 21 years of professional wrestling. But sitting here with you and witnessing what these two men did, and you look in the replay, Jay Driller oh. on the World Championship belt, Cole in more into the tag. One, two, three. When Cole finally crawled to his feet, he realized that it was over. Jay Briscoe with a message from his dad, from all of Sandy Fork, for the entire Briscoe Nation. Finally, Jay Briscoe is able to put it all behind him. Jay Briscoe is still the Ring of Honor World Champion, fans. But it is safe to say that these two men may never be the same again. So everyone, to me, so many people in that locker room and so many people across the world, Jay Briscoe seriously was one of the most incredible human beings you could ever meet. I mean, he was, he was unbelievable inside and outside the ring. I think about, I think about Jay and and Mark teaming together, they were two of the most tenacious, two of the most excellent pro wrestlers that you could find. And they had this, this charisma and this aura about them that was just absolutely second to none. And I, I speak for myself, and I also speak for a lot of other professional wrestlers. A lot of people have had their best pro wrestling matches with Jay Briscoe. Yeah, one of those. I, I, I remember being 20 years old and first getting into pro wrestling and I just got to Ring of Honor and I was scared, I was terrified, I was still trying to find myself as a wrestler and Jay Briscoe really helped me find myself. Uh, we went to war, man. I mean, we really, really did. Uh, but not only did he, he toughen me up, Guys, Jay Briscoe helped me more than any of you could ever possibly realize. I promise you I would not be standing in this ring today if it wasn't for Jay.
But even more importantly, yeah, it, Jay Briscoe, the man, the friend. It, he's one of those guys where, uh, whether he was in a locker room, a car, a hotel, he instantly made the room better. Do you guys know what I mean? Like he's one of those guys that just instantly changes the vibe in a good way. He, he, he was smiling all the time. I can't tell you how many times we have cried laughing at him just being a total goofball. Uh, he... He never complained. He never, never complained. He was always so grateful for everything and everyone, and he never talked badly about anybody. Whether you met him the day before or you've known him for 10 years, he genuinely wanted what was best for everyone. He's an unbelievable man, unbelievable. And most importantly, he loved He loved, absolutely loved his family. He was an incredible father, an incredible husband, an incredible son, an incredible brother. His entire heart and soul was his family. You could just see it in his eyes. And to, to Mark and the Briscoe family, we love you. We are here for you, and I am so sorry. The Briscoe family is one of the most kind, loving, and generous families that you could ever meet, and I hope you know how much we truly, truly love you. Right around this time, if Jay was here, he would smack me upside the head and say, hey, man up, we have a badass wrestling show we gotta get to. And Jay, Jay loved, loved awesome pro wrestling matches in a super fired up crowd. So is everybody ready to get fired up? No, no, this is for Jay Briscoe. Are you ready to get fired up? Jay, I love you, I miss you, and you left the world a better place. Perfectly said by Adam Cole. Jay, I miss you. First and foremost, I want to say, Jay Briscoe, I'm going to miss you, brother. I love you, I miss you, and uh, it was a tragedy. You were taking, taken from us so young, 38. I just, I'm blown away. You're so much younger than I am, and, and you should be here right now, and it makes me sad that you're not. And one thing I want to tell everyone is that a lot of people really don't understand Jay in detail because you see this cool, badass gangster. When he's in the ring, he has these crazy facial expressions. And, and I'll tell you, being in the ring with him, wrestling against him, there were times where you're like, oh my God, this guy's really locked in. Like, I, I hope he doesn't hurt me. Because he was that authentic. He was that genuine. He was so good at what he did. He was, he, he looked like a killer out there. And he could play the part because he was that great of an athlete and he was that great of a pro wrestler as well. Whether he was, you know, technically wrestling, just doing fundamentals, whether he was doing hardcore stuff, he could do it all. So talented. And once you got back through the curtain and he took off that demeanor and you talked to Jay Briscoe, the man, it's just so crazy how different he was, how soft-spoken and humble and almost bashful to a degree, just such a kind, good soul. And I scrolled back through the text exchanges we've had over the last few years. I got to know him a little bit after working with him in Ring of Honor for quite a while. And we tried to stay in touch when we could. We always talked about being fathers and we were both so proud and, and just loved our families so much and especially our kids. We both have a bunch of kids and, and that's to me the, the saddest thing in all this. 
because I know in, in Jay's heart, he wanted to see his kids through. He wanted to see them grow up. He wanted to see them succeed and 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 be great human beings. And I mean, I'm, it's heartbreaking. It's devastating to me that he doesn't get to see that now. So I think we have to appreciate what we got to see from Jay Briscoe and the Briscoes, and we have to celebrate his life and his career because he was special. Him and his brother, they broke ground. They were trailblazers. They really brought tag team wrestling up to another level in the 2010s. You know, when, when I, I think about when I hear Ring of Honor, two of the first names that come to my mind are the Briscoes and the Young Bucks. Both of those guys did amazing things there. And Jay was a good human being, and I'm so honored that I got to know him like I knew him. And I'm so sad that I've texted him for the very last time that I can't text him anymore. So I hope everyone out there will keep his family, and especially his two daughters that were also injured, in their thoughts and their prayers. And uh, I just really hope they can find a normal life coming out of all this because it's just such a sad, awful situation. Jay Briscoe, I love you, man, and I miss you, and I hope to see you again one day. One thing Jay Briscoe loved was spoiling for a fight, and we got a fighter coming out right now. Oh, we got a problem. This guy has a simple one fall with a 20 minute time limit. From Moldova, we have a problem. Marina Shafir. Marina Shafir, an MMA background, second degree black belt in judo. She is the problem. Yeah, she's a huge problem, especially for wrestlers, man. You know, if you become a pro wrestler, there's certain things you're trained about, certain movements that you make instinctly. Shafir does not have those. She has, she marches to her own beat, and she's hard to train for and almost impossible to beat. And her opponent, Mighty Myra. Mighty Myra trained by Nicole Savoy, one of the great shimmer champions of all time. But Mighty Myra has her, her work cut out for her. They, let's talk about the quick link, the human element here. Marina Shafir requested to be on this card. This is very special for her. Yeah. It's no secret her husband, Roger Strong, yeah, man. and herself they are great friends and acquaintances. The battles between Roddy and Jay Briscoe, well documented in the history of Ring of Honor. Over time, your enemies can sometimes become your best friends, Caprice. The Strong family and the Briscoe family have done that. Absolutely, man. So like, like I said before, man, some of your hardest fights are against people you become best friends with. Ooh, ah. That's what I mean, that judo throw right there. Shafir is able to take you in directions that you're not used to going in those landings that you prepare for. You land on your hip, you land on your knee. You're not prepared for it, and it hurts you. And Look at that. That's what I mean right there. She landed on her side. The rest of are used to landing on her back. She landed on her elbow, landed on her side. And it's got to disorient you. It, it, like a lot of the offense, the uncharacteristic offense of the Briscoes, of Jay Briscoe, he was a fighter, Caprice. He'd yeah. get in there and mix it up, and you never knew if you were going to get punched in the face or, or, or suffer. Most beautiful hip lock takeover you've ever seen. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. It's hard, like I said, it's hard to prepare for as well. You get somebody in here like like, like Mighty Myra that just wants some magic. She's going against somebody that wants to hurt you. And, and she didn't even get Shafir was teeing her up. She was hoping she'd bounce out of that corner. She yeah. didn't make it that far. She she didn't have it in her. She didn't have it in her. She's in here for a good match, a good opportunity. Ooh. Show who she is. She lands a, a quick one to the skull there. Mighty Myra here. Shot to the back. That, that, lock, that lacks a lot of force right there. Mm. Coming up, and it is Shafir out of it. Myra, oh, was sent down. She had no choice. That kick was so close, it sent Myra off of her heels, straight to the mat. Nowhere to go. She's in no man's land right here. Shafir knows how to put you away as well. So I think that's what Shafir's going to do right here. Yeah, hammer lock in the arm, Caprice. And Mighty Myra in trouble Oh, my now. goodness. Oh. Look at the talk. And that wrist yes. and that shoulder. Oh. It's all over. Here is your winner, the problem, Marina Shafir. Marina Shafir, the first person to raise their hand 
to say, I want to be a part of this. I want to celebrate the life of her good friend, of her family's good friend, Jay Briscoe. Makes quick work of Mighty Myra here. You know what? That's what Ring of Honor is built for, too, man. The people that are built different, the, the, the outcasts of pro wrestling, the ones that come in from different places to master their craft and attach it to wrestling. Shafir, a great example of that, and we're glad to have her here. Big win for Marina Shafir as we celebrate the life of Jay Briscoe. I was very fortunate to be a part of Ring of Honor from the very beginning, but because of the nature of professional wrestling, um, there were many periods of time where I wasn't a part of Ring of Honor. Um, I think there were actually four distinct areas of my career that can be called my Ring of Honor years. I started in 2002 and left in 2004. Uh, I came back from 2004 five to 2007 and then I was there for a year in 2010 and then from 2014 until the beginning of AEW so because of that I was in and out and people still sort of think of me as a I guess a forefather of Ring of Honor and as a result of that I saw a lot of people come and go from uh, the locker room but one person that came but never went was Jay Briscoe um, he wrestled on the very first show, and at that time he was just a teenager, uh, maybe 17, 18 years old. And um, his brother Mark wasn't even old enough to wrestle on the show. They actually made an angle of that where he couldn't wrestle until he was 18, I believe. And um, after a while, with everybody sort of coming and going and the way that wrestling was where some people left and other people were hired, Jay and Mark became the stalwarts of that locker room. They were always there. And um, over the course of my career, it, it was sort of a, an inside joke where um, we knew Jay and Mark would sort of go into contract negotiations every year and Jay would say something to the effect of, I just want y'all to know that we ain't going nowhere. And uh, that was the truth. They never went, they never left Ring of Honor. Their loyalty to the brand in coupling with their in-ring talents, they made that, that made them synonymous with Ring of Honor. And um, I think if you, if you look at the, the course of Ring of Honor and the, the output of wrestling that came from Ring of Honor, so many of the great, great matches came as a result of Jay Briscoe. And um, I couldn't think of anybody that would be more uh, appropriate to be as, uh, you know, when people talk about the Mount Rushmore of, of, of professional wrestling or the Mount Rushmore of this or that, the Mount Rushmore of Ring of Honor wrestling, definitely Jay and Mark Briscoe belong there. And Jay, um, you know, definitely with all the hard work that he put into it, uh, deserves his place at the top of, of, of the list of, of people. Um, I, I must have wrestled Jay anywhere from 10 to 20 times in my career. Certainly a lot more tag matches, but as far as singles matches, I was so fortunate to wrestle him um, a, a great number of times. And um, you always knew you were in for a fight. You always knew that you were going to come out battered and bruised. But I never... I never was worried. I was never scared. I was never disappointed. Uh, the idea, if I saw my name on, on the list next to his, or if I saw that we were wrestling, it wasn't a, a fear or a trepidation. I just knew that I was in for just someone that was so passionate and so focused and driven into putting the best match out there that he could. And when you're in the ring with someone like that, you can't help but push yourself to be the best wrestler you can be. And... Um, I, I'm so proud of the, of the work that I got a chance to do with him. Um, not just the singles matches with him, but the matches, the tag matches over the course of time. Um, I must have wrestled him and Mark dozens of times with different different tag team partners, Matt Seidel, Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky. Just 
when something like this happens, you, you look, you look back at, you look back at those moments and you realize how lucky you are to have had them and how fortunate to have been in a place in a period of time where, uh, just art, just great art was created. And I feel like every moment of Jay's career was 100% focused, 100% driven, 100% real. And uh, I, I said this in, a, in, a, in an Instagram post yesterday, but the only thing he did better than wrestling, the only thing he did better than being a professional wrestler was being a father and a brother and a man. And um, just seeing him backstage, the person that Jamin Pugh was, uh, so different than the per the wrestler Jay Briscoe was. Jamin was just the sweetest heart and the warmest person. And um, I'm sure people will talk about how he always had a smile and a hug and uh, a laugh for the guys in the locker room, the people that he respected, the people that he trusted, the people that he loved. And I'm so glad that I feel like I can count myself as one of those people. Um, I would like to say to Mark, his brother, and Ashley, his wife, and his, his daughters, um, thank you for sharing him with us. Um, I know we took him away from you many nights he spent on the road, uh, traveling, wrestling, and I know that was a hardship for you that all of us go through, but I appreciate every moment that he got to spend with me, and I hate that it had to be a moment away from you, but I appreciate and I thank you for letting me a part of, be a part of his life and part of his history. And um, I know that I know that there's pain right now, and it hurts, and it's hard to see an end or a light at the end of this tunnel. But just remember that we are all we all miss him, and we love him, and we love you. And um, Jay, thank you, man. I love you. I'll miss you more than. I miss you more than I can express. I don't have words to tell you, but thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Sandy Fort, Delaware, 225 pounds, this is Jay Briscoe. Already in the ring, his opponent from the City of Angels, 211 pounds, almighty Christopher Daniels. Here you see a two of the original stars of Ring of Honor, Christopher Daniels, almighty Christopher Daniels. Jay Briscoe, two-time former ROH World Champion, eight-time World Tag Team Champion here in singles competition. And he's not shy about telling you that. No, absolutely. I would, I would brag about it. I would too. Yeah. Day one. They've been here since day one, and they never left. Frankie Kazarian with some words for the crowd here. Got a match between two Ring of Honor originals, two Ring of Honor stalwarts, if you will. Absolutely, both of them on the first event almost 15 years ago. How old was Jay Briscoe the first time uh, you had him? Eight, 18 years old. 18 years old. The 
Briscoe's the definitive Ring of Honor tag team throughout the history of the company. Even if the Young Bucks may be the aces of the tag team division the past couple years. Absolutely, it's been almost four years since the Briscoes held the World Tag Team titles. Has it been that long? Yeah, I, I can tell you personally, because the, they won the World Tag Team titles for me and Jimmy Jacobs at Final Battle in 2012. Well, there's a name from my past. <laughs> what, Jimmy Jacobs? Yeah. Oh, you too. Ah, thanks. Uh, Pretty much everybody involved in this match as well. Uh, head scissors there by Jay Briscoe. Uh, Daniels was talking about the great match they had with Kyle O'Reilly last night in Arlington, Texas. Said he would love to have a rematch with them. Jay Briscoe was involved in a crazy three-way street fight with War Machine and Keith Lee and Shane Taylor. And that is where the Briscoes excel. These guys are the most unpredictable guys on the roster, bar none. We got some good grappling going on right now. Much like the previous match, staying to the next so far. We know both these guys, you know, Christopher Daniels and Angels Wings and Jay Driller. Both moves right to the top of the head, neck area. Absolutely. Slow feeling out process. It might be in it for the long haul here, Steve. Uh, absolutely. Last year's survival of the fittest from Hopkins, Minnesota. Jay Briscoe went all the way to the finals with the eventual winner, Michael Elgin. We're going to be seeing Survival of the Fittest Finals coming up a little bit later. The Panther, Jack Steen, Punishment Martinez, Bobby Fish, Leo Rush, and Dalton Castle. One of them will walk out Survival of the Fittest winner 2016 and go on for an eventual ROH world title match. What a melting pot of styles you have in that match, too. Huh? You look at those names, and honest to God, I can't think of anywhere but Ring of Honor you would ever see some of those people encounter each other. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we'll go over the rules, elimination rules. And, but right now, two of the originals, Frisco and Daniels going at shoulder tackle, but it didn't take the big man down. Yeah, he is not going to outpower Jay Briscoe. Sweep goes right back in the headlock. We saw how successful it was last match with Kyle O'Reilly going to the headlock, eventually hitting that brain buster. I mean, it's a tried and true pro wrestling technique. People who know nothing about pro wrestling know that headlocks are utilized, and with good reason. It's simple and effective, can come on from anywhere. It's a nice gateway to pretty much any body part you want to get to as well. Now shoots him off, drop down, Daniels goes over top, shoulder tackle now takes Jay Briscoe down. Got him down that time with the shoulder tackle. I'd pay closer attention if I were you. Yeah. Good old fashioned Delaware boot to the, to the belly. Daniels didn't see it coming, probably because of those camouflage pants. <laughs> Hard kicks at Jay Briscoe. Mm, Jay Briscoe not afraid to bend the rules. Todd Sinclair, especially popular here in San Antonio. Yeah, absolutely crazy, right? Yeah. Hey, again, with good reason, he's putting his time in this company. Yeah, fine official. Big knee there by Daniels. Daniels hits the ropes. Whoa! Mark Rana by Jay Briscoe followed up with an elbow. Goes for the pin, near fall at two. Just gritty pro wrestling, right? Yeah, absolutely. Something as flashy as a beautiful Frankenstein like that, and something as smash mouth as just a hard back elbow. Goes for the cover immediately, too. That was a smart move there by Christopher Daniels going to the ropes. Can't pin the man if he is in the ropes. Oh, I don't think I'd pie face Jay Briscoe. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't think anybody's surprised by that. Big boot to the face by right. Jay Briscoe. Christopher Daniels down. And the crowd now chants man up and uh, he throws Daniels to the floor. He just got him mad. I. I probably would have put the brakes on, too. To be yeah. fair, Frankie wasn't about to do anything. Whoa! All yeah. the way to the floor. 46 Arabia. years old. 
46 years old, Steve. Defying age. Showing that age is just a number with that Arabian insult to the floor. With one ACL notice. Mm -hmm. That shows the condition of Christopher Daniels. And just the ungodly athletic ability. I don't know what sort of deal he made with the devil to get it, but man, it's paying off in spades right now. He's breaking the count there. Count of 20 they have on the outside. Yeah, just a veteran maneuver right there. Drives the solar plexus. And you hear Frankie Kazarian talking about the Christopher Daniels, 23 year plus veteran. Now sits Jay Bristow down in that seat. Boots him. Targeting that rectus abdominis in midsection. I got to say, I think as far as body parts go, even though it's not an appendage that juts out, it's probably the smartest. You need that core for literally everything. Let's see him move up to the pectoralis there. Daniels now in full control, gets back into the ring. And really, uh, quite a few of the signature maneuvers working over the midsection, right? The best moonsault ever at the Angels' wings to some degree. Yep. Core area, always going to be affected. Now, Rams first go chest first into the corner. He got his work cut out for him, though. I mean, Jay's a thick guy. Sure is. Excellent physical condition. Armstrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. The elbow. Yes. Vintage Christopher Daniels. You saw Jay Briscoe trying to get that right shoulder up. Now, Steve, what do you do if you're Jay Briscoe right now? Mm, I try to create some space. Now, as you see Daniels going to the reverse bear hug, he's going to try and keep that, you know, keep the lungs going, trying to keep Jay Briscoe from getting full breaths in. Oh, absolutely. Iron him out. Absolutely. Right around the diaphragm. And you're right, if Jay Briscoe can get away, he can get some wind in those lungs, get some blood flowing through those veins. He can't do that. He's going to be fighting from underneath for the rest of the match. Absolutely. Fans watching on ROHwrestling.com. Make sure you're, you join us on demand, on DVD. We go Reach for the Sky Tour. Quick side Three events in England. Oh! What velocity there, but oh! Daniels hits him with a knee to the solar plexus. Tell you what I've taken that splash in the corner from Jay Briscoe before. It's like getting hit with a title wave, what I imagine that would feel like. The fact that Christopher Daniels was able to recover from that so quickly, reverse an Irish whip, and catch a knee to the midsection to shut Jay Briscoe down is nothing short of spectacular. Yeah, absolutely. Working on instinct sometimes. Daniels now for body slam. <laughs> the radium insult that way. Into Just the beautiful. Ring this time. Just beautiful. It's graceful. Yeah, it really is. You know, the creator of the move, Sabu, didn't do it that well. No, absolutely not. Now you see Daniels wrenching on that neck, putting his knee into the diaphragm. Yeah, showing a bit of frustration, too. And that's something you don't see much from Christopher Daniels, showing that frustration. No. Always in control mentally and yep. physically. Uh, he's called the ring general for a reason. It's because he always has a plan. But that small glimpse into his psyche, a little bit of anger that he couldn't put Jay Briscoe away, that he couldn't keep him down, uh, that might be his undoing. Now Daniels goes to the psychological game. It's physically effective too. I mean, that is a grown man putting all his weight on you. Absolutely, over 200 pounds. And then back to the reverse bear hug. Wearing him down. Well, you were right on the money when you said Jay Briscoe had to create space. He has not been able to do that, and that's why he's in this situation. Uh, Trying to get this crowd behind him, too. Right, referee talked to Sinclair, making sure that that wasn't a tap out. More of a way to get him himself mentally pumped up. Now, following a plethora of elbows. Breaks the hole. What, 10 rapid fire uh, yeah. elbows to the eardrum? And an 11. Oh, here we go. Jay known for those southpaw jabs. When 
They connect, they connect. Oh! Redneck uppercut there. Briscoe now. Irish Swift comes through. What and a drop kick. kick. Chasing him right into the ropes like that. Not the typical standing version a lot of people utilize, but running, putting all his weight into it. Yeah, Daniels had nowhere to go. After that neck breaker pushes him off. Oh. Thrust kick to the face. Could be all. I yeah. love it. Just simple and effective pro wrestling. Absolutely. Briscoe coming back now. He created that space, and he's definitely got the advantage. Trying to get the win back into the lungs. Ah, but Great there's a game weakness. Plan. Yep, there's a chink in the armor. Chance now. Since we're going to the corner, Briscoe with a boot. Goes to the second rope. Goes for the cross body, but the general is ready. Ah, uh, that was genius. Give the devil his due. Blue Thunder Bomb, cover. And even though his right leg was covering his left, uh, left arm and shoulder, it just left enough to where his right shoulder could be raised. Oh, absolutely. You know, he mentioned it earlier, he is not at 100%. Nobody involved in ladder war is. No. Absolutely not. You're, yourself, Chris Saban, uh, the Bucks. And I would and say we probably got the least of it, all things being equal. It's well through there. Sidestep that high boot. Go! Oh! Death Valley driver. High angle, too. You've been on the receiving end of a lot of those, Steve. Oh, absolutely. Come across your top of your shoulders. You can see Daniels, you know, flicking his fingers just to make sure he's still got feeling. Dangerous not only because it compresses the neck, but it can knock you out, too. Mm -hmm. I think we've both seen quite a few flashes in our career, and I know I've seen a couple from Death Valley drivers. Headbutt to the midsection, British style. Once again, instinct taking over from Christopher Daniels. You really don't want to get into a punching battle with him. No, Briscoe. that's just stupid. Or elbows, or boots, or pretty much anything you can hit you with. Oh. There's that neck breaker. Oh. Drives down. I tell you, he snaps that neck breaker like nobody else in oh. the business today. Every time he does that to somebody, my neck hurts. Yeah, right? Just that hyper extension of it. It's like a little tiny mini car crash. Yep. Oh, Briscoe, maybe setting him up for Jay Driller. Oh, he still top. got it hooked, though. Ah. Daniels turned it into a near fall. Had to release the grip. Roll through. Could be get it. Oh. Grasping at straws now. Not even trying for oh. his finishers. Just shut down with the hard close line. Both men going for covers constantly, getting whatever they can. I mean, it might not be getting a three count, but I think we both know that it takes an awful lot of stamina to kick out it again sure does. and again. Yep. Especially as the match wears down, mm -hmm. tired, sore. And there is no sort of training in the world that can prepare you for this type of action. Never mind cervical herniations. Can't even pull the man to his feet. I mean, it's not stopping him from trying, of course. No, absolutely not. Oh, and Daniels down. Referee may want to think about stopping this. Yeah, the man can't continue if he can't get to his feet. I mean, what other option do you have? He's just dragging a limp body up. Oh, played possum there. Sets him up. Oh. Oh, he worked that midsection over, but good earlier. Sliced the cake. Onto his feet, amazing. Oh. Picks him up, Jay Triller. And there it is. That's all she wrote. Cover. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Jay Briscoe! Not a good night for the addiction, Steve.
Yo, absolutely not a good night in the win-loss column. Not a good night for their next. Great night for their chiropractor. The J Driller is effective here as Jay Briscoe defeats Christopher Daniels, 14 minutes, 58 seconds here. Night two, survival of the fittest, 2016. What a great match here, we saw. See the ice pack. Yeah, bring more. We saw Frankie Kazari and Abide by the Code of Honor earlier. There's Christopher Daniels. Uh, where was this when we were wrestling them? I don't know, Alex. I, I, I want to say that there was a humbling process after Ladder War 6, so the addiction. I would say so. The addiction definitely had the most to lose in that match, and they lost it. Another great match here by Christopher Daniels, Jay Briscoe. Once again, Christopher Dan is showing you're still at the top of your game. Steve, honestly, I'm starting to think maybe the days of it being my night might be passing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, interesting words from Christopher Daniels. Hey. I think he might be the only one that thinks that, though. 46 years on this planet. What, 23 spent the pro wrestling business? Yeah. There's a lot of miles on that body. All right, when we come back, survival of the finish final. Who will win? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna miss you, Jay. Um, I know it's, it's really hard to talk about it today. I don't have any inspirational words or anything cute to say or whatever. Like, I'm just so stuck. Um, it doesn't seem real, and uh, it just doesn't, it's not fair, and it's just all this stuff. But uh, I, I just love you, Jay. I'm going to miss you a lot, man. And I'm just going to miss the good times we had and, and how just all this stuff is just not... It's not fair, dog. And uh, I really don't know what to say, man. I just, it's just not real to me, dog. It's just, just maybe the Raiders will have a shot now. Maybe you can help them out in heaven, you know? That's all I can really think, like positive wise, you know? Man, I, I, I love you, man. And I love your family and uh, <sighs> You'll be missed by a lot of people, though, because you touched a lot of people, Jay, just by you being you, man. You and Chicken, just y'all being yourselves. Good human beings, good family men. You're a goal for a lot of us outside of wrestling. So uh, I'm just going to miss you, dog. I'm just going to miss you, man. So that, that's really it. That's... I thought I had more to say, but I really don't. You know, uh, I guess the only thing, only good thing I can say right now is for all the the boys and in the back and, and, and for Jay's family, you know. Um, we have a choice now. Um, we can either do good in Jay's memory um, or do bad because of the pain we're feeling. Um, it's going to be hard for me, but I, I want to choose good and stick to that path in, in, in your memory, Jay. Um, duh. That's it. I love you, dog. And uh, I hope one day, I, you know, I'm forgiven and I can see you again. 
Tell Sweeney I said hello. Tell Brody I said what up, man. And I, and I hope to see you soon one day. If you want to talk about Ring of Honor history, the man we're about to see has a history of nearly 10 years in and out of Ring of Honor. This is next by Simple One Paul, approaching the ring from Freehold, New Jersey, weighing 234 pounds, Q.T. Marshall. Q.T. Marshall has been on a roll as of late in New Japan Strong in AEW, and of course, no stranger to Ring of Honor fans. In fact, Caprice, do you know who this man made his Ring of Honor debut against? Uh, I was gonna say me, but who? Against Jay Briscoe in a tag team uh. match, teaming with Sam Shaw against Jay and Mark Briscoe. QT Marshall, Ring of Honor icon, uh. QT Marshall. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, Q QT was excellent in Ring of Honor, but would use the term icon. Yeah. Now, when you talk about kings and royalty and icons, this is a little different. Yeah! And it's important for Yonkers, New York, weighing 244 pounds, Eddie Kingston. You know, if there was ever an extra Briscoe brother, right here. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you what, when you, met, when you meet the Briscoe family, you go down to Sandy Fork, down to Laurel. You see Briscoes of all shapes, colors, creeds. Eddie Kingston fits right in at the family barbecue. Yeah, Eddie Briscoe. Eddie, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Eddie, Bri Eddie Briscoe, Eddie <laughs> Kingston is no stranger to mixing up with the Briscoes. He and Homicide yeah. in Outlaw Inc. They had some notorious wars, some bloody wars. Yeah, with Jay and Mark Briscoe. And this is a special match for both of these men. QT, a little surprised maybe that Eddie's the favorite. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, he's looking for the coat of honor. So I gotta give him that. Because even in Jay's dark I don't, day, I don't trust this you one bit. Not a, not a bit. He was in a movie with the Rock. Just, if I was an Eskimo. Nope. He's in a movie with the Rock. I trust him. Coat of honor right here. Told you. Oh, that clean break. That was an unforced error from QT. Caprice is Eddie. Much like you did anticipated well, that result there. And open hands. And Eddie Kingston, who has his hands all over the wrestling world, whether it's here with Ortiz, whether it's with Jay White in New Japan. So busy. Certainly is. QT can say the same for him. Yep. And he's busy getting down to the mat right now. You know what, I, I can say a lot of bad things about QT Marshall. Wow! The one good thing about this man is QT, you don't want to admit it, but he's one of the smartest guys in the room and in that ring, man. He knows exactly what he's doing. Even when he doesn't look like he's setting a guy up for what he wants to, he's sneaky, he's witty, and crafty all at the same time. He's great, he's a, what is this? Ah, what, what, bring him over here. See, yeah, no, what? No, I don't, I do not hold want him. Hold him. All you gotta do is hold him, Ricky Bobby. Hold him. No. ain't gonna hold him. Oh, big night best shot. Yeah. There you go. Now there's three. Oh, I, see? We might be That's all you got to do. <laughs> Why didn't you use the fan? You play by the rules, Caprice. I'm just saying if you ask me to, you know. If you, I'm a nice guy. Look at, face. Look at that. Look at face. Eddie Kingston having a little fun here. You know, come to think of it, there was often times when we would see the Briscoe fam. Oh, come on. Referee Bryce Remsburg. You know, I can't get too mad at that, man. I mean, it wasn't like he was playing by the rules letting the fans hit you. You know, that's outside that's, interference. Yeah. He's got two dirty players in. Both of them thinking the other dirty. Hey, QT going to the throat there. You know, I think back to, to some of the times the Briscoe family got involved, whether it be Papa Briscoe, uh, Mama Briscoe, Uncle Jethro. Man, coming Jethro. Out of the work. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funny about that at all. No. Man, those ropes, under those ropes, those are steel cables right across your throat. Hey, one of the head trainers at the Nightmare Factory starting to produce some great students, passing along that knowledge. The impact behind the steel ropes, man, is the impact alone hurts, but then recovering from your throat being hit. I mean, you could just chop yourself in the throat and you'd be coughing. So, man, the steel rope oh. hitting it. 
And that's what I'm talking about, how smart QT is. He's staying high. Even with that elbow, that was a high elbow, like close to the throat there. QT knows exactly what he's doing. Nice lateral presses there. And these pins aren't for nothing here. He's making any, he's just making any move his body. He's wearing them down. But he left himself open for those shots right across the forehead. It's almost like spy versus spy here, man. You got two guys that are used to the dirty playbook. Mm. Oh, that was what? QT off the ropes. Big kick to the side of the head. Almost like Eddie's asking for it. I mean, he's a big man. He's 6'2. Yeah, 230 something pounds. Yeah. You gotta be crazy to, to ask to be kicked in the head. No, you just gotta be Eddie. It's a good job. That was pretty good. Oh! Turn him inside out with that one. Certainly did. You know, you hear these grunts and groans. Eddie's the one guy that used to be able to communicate with the Briscoes in that weird yeah. unspoken language that they, the two of them had together. He speaks Briscoe. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, here's that King's Road style that Eddie Kingston has perfected. Oh, God. It's like instant rug burn, instant confusion. How'd that one song go? At the face wash? <laughs> it does. Car wash. Oh, body. Yes. Nice oh. suplex. Beautiful nice. T-bone. Hooks the leg. Come on. Two. And Eddie Kingston. Now you got that song Two. in my head. That's, that's what I'm good for. At the face wash. See? Yeah. Eddie Kingston looking for a back suplex. It is QT Marshall. Those, the point of the elbow on the Those elbows are out of desperation. I think he's spending oh. too much time. He's going for that diamond cut is what he wants, but he's wasting time with Kingston. DDP yep. handed it down to QT. QT turned his back on him. Oh, oh back fist to the future. God almighty. He has him dazed. He's trapped. Dragon sleeper position. It's already. And QT yeah. nowhere to go. No way to this match. Eddie Kingston. And if there was ever an analog for a brother from a different mother. Yeah, absolutely. Jay Briscoe. Absolutely. I, I see in the world sees a lot of the same characters, the same traits, the same yeah. genuine compassion, the same sincerity, the same raw emotion, love, and heart that we saw in Jay Briscoe and Eddie Kingston. I'm so glad he's here tonight. Passion. And that sign says it all. Jay Briscoe forever. Eddie Kingston, your victory in what was quite a fun bout, if I may so say so myself. Um, my name is Austin Gunn, and I'm going to tell you the first time I ever met Jay Briscoe. I got signed to ROH in 2018, and I was in the dojo system, and I was a rookie. I've only been there two months, and we were allowed to go to our first ROH show, so I'm around helping out backstage, and the main event was the Briscoes, and they had a tables, ladders, and chairs match. They're going crazy. They're sacrificing their body. Jay's going off ladders. Mark's going over the top into through tables, and it was the most insane match I've ever seen. So um, there was one spot where Jay went up on the ladder, went through a table, and the table cut him from the top of his neck to the top of his butt. And I mean, the gouge was huge. It was about one inch thick, and he was bleeding all over the place. Finished the match, and... I'm a rookie, so I'm like, can we go get the paramedics? So I run to the paramedics room, and the paramedics are already packing up their stuff, and I'm going, please, please, Jay Briscoe's bleeding on his back, like we gotta get stitches, like you guys gotta stitch him up, and the paramedics look at me and go, sorry bud, we're off the clock. And I was like, oh, I was like, what are you talking about? Um, so I go, you know what, let's do this, do you have butterfly stitches? And do you have cleaning solution? And do you have cloth? And they go, yeah, sure. So they give me a care package, and I take it to the locker room. So the paramedics take off because they were off the clock. Jay and Mark come back through the curtain, and um, I get Jay's attention. I go, hey, follow me to the locker room. And mind you, this is my first ROH show. I'm a nobody. I'm a rookie. 
So I'm really nervous even talking to these guys because they're top guys of ROH. And um, Jay comes through the, the, in the locker room and I'm sitting there with the care package of cloth cleaning solution. And I'm like, hey Jay, like the paramedics left. Um, but what we can do is I can try to butterfly stitch your entire back for you until you get to a doctor where they can stitch you up. And, he, and of course, Jay goes, nah, brother, don't worry about it. I got a flight in about two hours. I'll be all right. And I went, I went, I went, no, I went, no, please let me do this for you. And he goes, after like asking him like five times, he was like, okay. So the ROH show, everybody was going home. Everybody packed their bags. The fans went home. And it was me, Mark, and Jay, and we sat in the locker room for two hours, and I went from the top of his neck to the top of his butt, and I butterfly stitched the, his entire back. And um, that was the first time ever meeting Jay Briscoe. And as nervous as I was for those two hours that I stitched up his back, we talked about family. We didn't talk about wrestling. He talked about... Uh, I told him who my dad was, and we just we just shot the shit for two hours, and I s butterfly stitched his back. I saw him the next week, and he came up to me and gave me a big hug, and he said, "Hey, brother, uh, my doctor said that was the best butterfly stitch job he's ever seen. Thank you, bro." <laughs> and because of that, he didn't have like that big of a scar on his back, but um, just. Uh, he was the most sensitive person in the world, and you just felt like uh, like he wanted to know so much about you when you sat and talked to him, and he didn't brush you off at all. Um, the last time I saw him, when they did the dog collar match with FTR, uh, I saw him, and he gave me a hug, and he uh, called us ass boys, and that's the first time I wasn't mad at anybody for calling us ass boys. So thank you, Jay, for everything. Um, Thank you for being so sensitive and accepting me um, and just treating me like uh, one of your own. So I love you, miss you, and praying for your family. So, all right. All right, so wrestling is a very scary, intimidating uh, business. And when I first started out, the locker room at OVW was intimidating and scary, just like I said. And I wanted to start wrestling because I wanted a career of traveling the world with my brother, you know? So when you see there's other tag teams of brothers, you aspire to that. And Ring of Honor started doing tapings at OVW. So suddenly this scary locker room I was in as this brand new green clueless pretty boy idiot bimbo was now twice as big with other scary, intimidating guys. And the Briscoe brothers are the top of the scary, intimidating guys that you meet in the locker room when you're brand new. And I remember seeing those dudes and thinking, they are gonna take one look at me and just eat me alive. And in the locker room, they were like, so welcoming, so nice, so funny, and uh, the kind of dudes that make you feel cool to be around. And so, I never had a lifelong friendship uh, with Jay or, or the Briscoe brothers, but I do remember as a very young, brand new, naive green boy, the sc scary, absolute scariest guys in the locker room being so freaking cool and just kind of reestablishing my mind, like this is this is where I belong. This is the place I belong. So yeah, uh, God bless the family. I, I hope all the best. Thanks, dude. I started with Ring of Honor in 2013, just doing ring crew, setting up the ring, running errands. And it was at a time to where I was at the bottom of the totem pole of professional wrestling. And there were two guys when I walked into that Ring of Honor locker room who made me feel special. They made me feel like I belong. They treated me with kindness and respect. And that was Jay and Mark Briscoe. And they were just the most charismatic, funny, entertaining guys in the locker room. And Jay meant a lot to a lot of people. He was an excellent father, an excellent brother, an excellent friend, one of the best professional wrestlers that we have ever seen, one half of one of the greatest tag teams that we have ever seen. And Jay will never be forgotten. And it's up to us to make sure that his memory will always live on. And, um, you know, I'm gonna miss him. 
I'm gonna miss my wife. Thank you, Jay. This contest is set for one fall, being accompanied by Sky Blue from Columbus, Ohio, Madison Rain. Madison Rain, five times over, recognized as a women's world champion, accompanied to the ring by Sky Blue. Madison Rain in a unique position here, Caprice in Ring of Honor. We can call it Proving Ground matches. Right. AEW fans would know a similar concept as an eliminator. This is a Proving Ground eliminator bout where Madison Rain can, can put herself at the front of the line. That's right, you get a match against the champion if you last the time limit, or if you beat the champion, you get a match with the champion. For the title. Rick Abani, I gave you the money for I the know, light bill. I paid it, I swear I paid it. <sighs> Why you always gotta rely on me for that? Wait, cut. And her opponent from Dallas, Texas, she is the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, the Fallen Goddess, Athena! I was there in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Caprice, when there was a young woman named Jody Threat who stepped up to the plate. And something in the mind of Athena, there was a switch that just that just turned. It, 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 it turned and it broke off. Yeah. And you are seeing the resultant of that match here. Athena's been one of, if not the most dominant Ring of Honor women's competitor that we've seen in quite some time. And on another hand, there are athletes that are looking for a switch. They're looking for that one thing that hits, and once it hits, they don't turn it off. Athena has found that switch, and I don't think anybody in this world, except her opponents, wants her to turn that switch off. There you see Madison Rain five times over. Hired back in August at AEW, Ring of Honor to be the coach of the women's division, but she is a player coach. Make no mistake about it, one of the very top women in the game today as we see every Stephon Smith call for the code of honor. And this is always what's been interesting to me. Athena has no problem with the code of honor, but she will yeah. be close. Absolutely. The thing about Madison, though, is the experience she brings, our champion's experience. Anytime you've been a champion, you can beat a champion at any time. And Madison Rain, both these women actually have Ring of Honor roots as the forearm connects. Madison Rain, 2017, 2018, 2019, part of the Ring of Honor Women's Division. We talked about Athena's journey Man, on her way to defeating Mercedes Martinez. Yeah, I remember a young Athena finding herself in pro wrestling, coming to Ring of Honor. Wow! Oh, flying hits scissor there. There's no doubt about who she is now. And charging in. Back elbow with a hip attack. Nice snap mare there. That's the way Madison is, staying on you, not letting you get into space, keeping you down, keeping you off your feet. Athena knows this. She's trying to reset the game plan when she goes to the outside of the ring. That's what she's breaking that momentum. What I like about Madison, whether it was an impact of Ring of Honor or an AEW, that speed, that quickness. As Athena, her focus is veering a little bit, Capri. She's leaving herself vulnerable. She's engaging with the fans. As yep. Oh, Ooh. Madison. That strength on display there. She still has her. Oh, my goodness. Is this a suplex? Wow. Is she, how is she pausing with her? We're in the danger zone here. Oh, God. Just tossed her directly in front. This calls him like a gourd buster. And Athena nah. brings the fight as you see Sky Blue. License second for this match. Take a step back. What are you going to do? Take a shot. Hey, come on, Liz. DQ your friend. Take a shot. I see what you mean there, Rick Amon. She's spending too much time not focusing on her opponent. And that can cost her because she's got a champion caliber right behind her. And Madison Rain coming right back up with a forearm there. Remember back final battle 2017. Madison Rain challenged for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Her bouts against Sumi Sakai. Oh! Man, her head bounced off of that. You see her grabbing her shoulder there. And every time you see somebody grab their arm there, they're, they're looking for feeling. Cool. Sending Madison Rain back in is yep. Athena. She still doesn't have feeling in that arm there. You hit that nerve, you got that, that rush going through your arm. Oh, goodness. We talked about analogs for Jay Briscoe. There'll only be one Jay Briscoe, but <laughs> Athena has that, that same fire, that same fight. 
Just a brawler can brawl with the best of them. What makes Athena so so methodical is the fact that she could pick a body part. With all the anger, she has a focus inside of her that makes her so dangerous. As Madison Rain just stretched over yeah. the knees and shins, being bent in half here in the center of the ring. Stefan Smith is right there to make sure he's able to hear if she gives up or not. Oh, pin position. Two. That's what Athena has to look out for. Madison Reno is so quick, that high octane offense being neutralized right now by Athena. I'll tell you, man, there's nothing more dangerous than controlled anger, and that's what Athena has. Mm. Forget if it was the Bible or Prince who said hell had no end, fury like a woman scorned, as Athena delivering. There you go. Oh, cover. Two. So some contrast there. <laughs> The Bible or Prince? Which Purple rain. Prince, Prince may have quoted the Bible, as we're seeing. Hey, all the Athena, Jay Briscoe, of course, a man of great faith. Absolutely, a absolutely. Great, great family man. We can't say enough. I think about all the times we traveled together, and him being excited for his daughter's cheerleading. Him teaching me his, his daughter's yeah, cheerleading routine. Proud of him. Proud of him. Just the love he had showing the football plays he drew up for his son Gannon. You know, you know they shut down the schools the, the next day. Mm -hmm. um, that's how much they meant to the, the that's how Delaware much, community. Well, that's how much of the community that Jay was involved in. Mm -hmm. That so many people knew in the community. They shut down the school the next day. We'd like to send our well wishes to the entire Briscoe family, mm -hmm. but particularly Gracie. Huh? You're not and Jay, you are who nothing. were involved in the accident as well. We hope they're We're still praying for their recovery. Absolutely. By the grace of God. As we see Athena now, Irish whip into the corner, charging in. Big back elbow there from Madison Rain. It was that stagger step. Big that one stutter step that allowed her to put that elbow up. And that's that's the level we're fighting at here, Caprice, yep. with these two top tier women athletes. Athena now to the outside. If you make a millisecond mistake, it's gonna cost you, and it might cost you the match. That's what I was talking about with a champion caliber like Madison Rain. She she's a, she can win at any time. And so you overlook her by looking at looking at Sky Blue or somebody. You're taking your point off of just like this example right here, it can cost him. Yeah. Ooh. Kick delivers. And Madison Rain smartly staying on top of Athena here. Oh, you're into the barricade. And I don't even have to explain what that barricade is made out of. Just listen to that impact. Reminiscent of those steel barricades that the Briscoes, Kevin Steen, El Generico would use against one another, age of the fall. And the fans used to use to make noise. And speaking of making noise, Sky Blue making some noise right now, cheering her charge on her mentor. Madison Rain on, cross body, delivers, hooks the leg, take cover, hit it! Ooh. And Caprice, if, if Madison Rain would have won there, she would have vaulted directly to the top yeah. of the Ring of Honor women's standings, earning herself a title shot. Instantly number one contender, so she has a lot to fight for here. And this title has been so special. You think about how we started 2022 with Roxy, Deanna Perrazzo, Mercedes Martinez, Athena, the, the caliber of athletes that have been competing for this oh! title. Oh! Is unprecedented. It's all steel cables there. And She's gonna. Oh my goodness! Side effect on the apron. Not only that being the hard side of the ring, but the, two. two. Oh. And, and it put her perfect position to cover her, Caprice. And the velocity behind Athena coming down. She wasn't finished going down. That added so much more to the impact. Newtonian physics at play there, absolutely caprice. Yeah. Athena getting that extra, and that's that's who's gonna win this. You get the extra one, two percent. Yep. Until you cross the finish line, Athena, gut wrench up. You see Madison was grabbing at their back there. On her feet, but she's barely on her feet. And Madison here. Here's the fix. Bye. Cover. Two, hit. Two. Just a two count there. That just shows that you can't count Madison out, man. She can win at any time. You can't overlook her. You can't think you got it made. Ooh! Oh. Flatliner into the turnbuckle. Yeah. Just planting her down there. Athena does to Madison Rain. Now Athena looking to the top. I'm not a prophet, Rick or Bonnie, but I've seen this position before. Certainly have. 
And, oh, oh, instead! Instead, chance of rain! Two and, wow! Madison does her homework. That's when you study somebody. This is not just a match for Madison. Madison has studied for this match. Madison said, hey, if I get in this position right here, this is what I'll do. Execute it perfectly. Let's see if she can capitalize on it. Athena undoubtedly looking for the O-Face. Instead, it was a chance to rain the cutter. That connected on Athena. And Athena out on her feet. Dead weight. And Madison able to bring her back up. Look for the raindrop here. Athena, who's done her homework, biting me. Biting her? Inside of the tricep. Oh, not letting go of the wrist. And now Athena has her up, has rain into the shins. And he cross face here, and that's it. Here is your winner, the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, Athena. Athena in the spirit of Jay Briscoe, showing that combination of brawling, of technical skill. And as, as the wins continue to pile up to I, I I wonder just who, who can dethrone Athena? Yeah, and, and, and right here you see another uh, evolving of her with a submission move at play to finish her opponents. Oh, come on! Oh, oh. off tour! Atlantic Sky Blue with that world championship. She could have just walked away. The match was over. She should have just walked away. I... And undoubtedly, heavy fines will be administered for that behavior, especially on a night of celebration. Athena, your victor here in our Proving Ground Eliminator bout. The Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. For the better part of the last 20 years now, uh, I've known Jamin Pugh, Jay Briscoe, as most people know him as. Um, so many memories with Mark and Jay. Um, so many moments are shared with those guys, not only in the ring, but outside the ring. Um, memories I'll cherish forever. Um, whether it's, you know, all of us sitting around the bar, having a few beers, telling stories, um, seeing your mom and dad at the shows. They became like locker room parents to a lot of us at ROH. Um, you know, my heart goes out and to your wife and your children, um, your mom and your dad, and your brother Mark. Um, Jamin, thank you for being my friend, and thank you for being my brother. I miss you, and I love you, man. Uh, my name is Zane Decker. I'm a producer for AEW. I uh, was at ROH, uh, and the first time that I got to ROH, Jay and Mark made me feel like I've known them for years. They were so accepting and so positive they're just the type of guys that you would want to be around. Um, anytime that I got to work with Jay, he always took my notes. He always listened to my input and what I had to say or had to offer or bring to the table. And he didn't brush it off at all. He made me feel like I was smart. He made me feel like I knew what I was talking about, which is crazy because I'm here. I'm like, I've been only in the business for three or four or five years. And this guy who's a veteran who's like done it all is listening to me. And I'm like, man, that's amazing. And he was one of the first people in all of wrestling that made me feel like I belonged and that I fit in and that I was wanted and appreciated. Uh, in this line of work, a lot of people, you're moving so quick and people don't tell you that they appreciate you and or they tell you, you know, they, they just don't see what you do in all facets of, of this industry. And he was one of the guys that knew how much work I was putting in and made me feel appreciated. And I, uh, I'll never forget that, uh, that he made me feel that way and it motivated me to want to do 
more and do better and treat people better. The, the, one of the shining moments I remember specifically too is there was this time at, at one of the tapings when we had no, nobody back, uh, nobody in the arena because of the virus and uh, everybody's sitting watching the matches and the monitors and I, you know, I had a minute break so I came and I sat on the floor and like Taven and Maria and Dalton stood up to give me their chairs and Jay got up and he was like, no, 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 you see here, boy. And made, you know, they all made me sit in a chair instead of on the concrete. Uh, and that's just the kind of guy that he was. He would give you the shirt off his back. He would uh, do anything for you. And he loved his family so much, man. I was with him a few weeks ago and he was just, he did the man like was just telling stories about his, his son and just like cracking us all up. And he was a man of God. He loved his wife and his kids. And I can't wait one day where I can, I'll be in heaven and I'll be, I'll be with him again one day. And uh, yeah, I just, I just love his family and I hope and pray for them that God will give them the strength that they need during this time. And I pray for Mark. And I know that Jay left such an impression on me in the only four, three, four years I knew him. And other people have known him for so long and it makes me feel like, man, I barely even got to scratch the surface with Jay. But in those four years, he left such an impression on me to want to be a better man and to be loyal, to be kind and compassionate and a man of faith. And I will never forget the traits that Jay left on me. And I will try my whole life to take those attributes that he showed everybody that he has and apply them to my own life. Love you, Jamin. I'll see you down the road, man. This contest is set for one fall. Approaching ring first from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Weighing to 103 pounds, Brandon Cutler. Brandon Cutler, Ring of Honor alumnus. He competed in one match in Ring of Honor. That makes him an alumnus. <laughs> it makes him an alumnus. For all intents and purposes, though, this is his singles debut here in Ring of Honor. You know, as being being the elite, no pun intended. Yeah. They, they've crossed their paths with the Briscoes many times over the years. The feud's well documented with the Young Bucks. Brandon Cutler wanted to make sure his name was in the hat to be part of the special event here tonight. Talking about crossing paths with the Briscoes. Yes. And his opponent from Joliet, Illinois, weighing 218 pounds, Rock Hard Juice Robinson. You see the jacket and the pants emblematic of the Bullet Club. Frisco certainly had their war wow. with Machine Gun Carl Anderson, with Doc Gallo. And in the six-man tag team division two, the never openweight six-man tag team championships, they were the inaugural champions with Toroyano. Face a number of challengers from the Bullet Club side. Juice Robinson, that natural evolution. But it was Juice Robinson who, who fought back Jay Briscoe as part of Lifeblood in 2019 when the Briscoes aligned themselves with Silas Young, Shane Taylor, Bully Ray. Earned his respect, continued to earn his respect over the years. He also wanted to be here tonight. To compete now this is an interesting clash of styles because totally different it, you have a a former united St iwgp united states champion in juice robinson a man who, who's won at the tokyo dome on january 6th and january 4th in juice robinson and and then you have brendan cutler who is the self for self self-professed stooge of, of the elite yeah even the way you said that, that you have brendan cutler kind of explain everything you got somebody that's all about business, and then somebody's all about having a good time. Who do you think is going to win that? Side headlock here. I always like Brandon Cutler's shoe selection and jumpsuit selection, too. It's always the same. Well, he's been busting out the, uh, the Deodora Young Bucks shoes as of late. We just want to thank our partners at Deodora and Jay. But he, some hip tosses here and a, and a big body slam. And, I'd like to apologize to Brandon Cutler, the purveyor of Cucamonga Strong Style, because yeah. he's on a roll right now and he's that, got the advantage. That was the fury right there, some fury of fire. Cutler fire there. Ducks the left. Drop kick, sends Juice down. It's got to be the shoes, Rickabani. It's got to be the shoes. 
And a big clothesline. Sends Juice up and over. And for those keeping track at home, it looks like Brandon Cutler wearing the Christmas Air Jordans. <laughs> Told you has got to be the shoes. <laughs> for Christmas. How long does it take for a nose to heal? That's the only question I got. Right? It's like, oh, that's disgusting. Maybe it's a spit card. You think it's a spit Oh, the cold spray! Not meant to go in the eyes. Oh, and Juice, what is he facing? Everybody saw it. And he might be going directly. Oh, headbutt here. No, no, no that, that was cold. How cold? It's a cold spray, so it's mm. cold. Oh, well. <laughs> Ice cold is Juice. Look at the headbutt there. Front face lock. And Brandon Cutler driven down. Senton driving the breath through the midsection of Brandon Cutler here. The rib cage. Away. Two. And it's funny because we talked about Jay Briscoe's appreciation for brawlers. <laughs> we know his appreciation for women with authority like Mama Briscoe, like his great Absolutely. wife Ashley. Respect for him. Absolutely. And and we knew he liked to have a little fun too with guys like Toriano, who he won the, the never open weight six man titles with. As you see Juice Robinson now taking the match a little more seriously here, trying to wear down Brandon Cutler. I was gonna say he's wearing him down, taking the breath away from him. Cutting off the oxygen, making it hard for him to breathe. And with that mask, now that mask is working against Cutler. You see it riding up on his face, riding up on his chin. Sometimes those masks are digging your face. You try to readjust them and you can't because you're actually in a fight. And Brandon Cutler, ooh, knee to the midsection there. Juice delivers that left forearm. Yep. And Cutler firing right back. And, and, and Cutler's got nothing to lose. This is his biggest match in quite some time. Well, it lasts a lot longer, longer than I thought it would. Give credit where credit do, credit where credit's due. He's a finely conditioned athlete. Kick to the midsection, off the ropes. Ducks the left lariat. Forearm connects, off the ropes. Brandon Cutler, shoulder tackle. And it's Cutler sending Juice Robinson down. Swing and a miss. Inverted atomic drop. Double leg takedown. Big elbow okay. drop. Okay. Caprice, he's, he's strung four or five moves together. I'm getting ready to say he's stringing him up. He's got him set up for her rip cord. Oh. Did he tap? He dabbed. Did he dab? <laughs> he dabbed. Whoa! Oh. Cover! Two! Last time I saw someone dancing like that, it was Jay Briscoe on top of a table down in Nashville Honky Tonk when me and him had one too many light beverages. That, that, that's the explain every bit of it right there. That explained it right there. <laughs> well, the thing is, Brandon Cutler doesn't consume light beverages. Oh, my goodness. He's still been bad for us. <laughs> Fireman's carry position. Oh, look at this. The airplane spin. That airplane spin with your head pointing in that direction, it makes you so dizzy. Even after the move lands, you're trying to find your direction. But it's also making Brandon dizzy as well. Certainly is. That fluid behind your ear starts to move around, mess with your equilibrium. And, and we are at eight rotations, I believe, almost nine. Who's just even better for here? Well, yeah, because he didn't land the, like when Bob Backlund used to do it, he or, used to dump them. Or when or, Claudio used to do it. Right. Or, he went or, championships. Or Mike Rotunda, yeah. Hey. Both guys. And look, they can't find each other. It's the game about this. Sidekick misses right, straight right connects. He may have knocked him out. Two, and wow. I had to see where that was going because I saw where the, where the forearm landed, landed flush on the chin. I thought he knocked him out. Looked like he hit the I, off button. I thought Juice was out. I thought he knocked Juice clean out. Juice may still be out on his feet there. His eyes are open, but nobody's home. And Brandon Cutler, who we see weekly on, on dark elevation, who we see at the side of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. He's on the doorstep of getting the biggest win of his career right here, Caprice. Would he be on the precipice? He'd be on the precipice. These Larry Holmes style Ooh. jabs. Falling forward, falling on the back foot. It's Juice with the right. And now looking for the left hand from God. He hit the mask. 
Extreme pain for Juice Robinson. Slight discomfort for Brandon Cutler. I bet you he broke three fingers there. I mean, that is that is galvanized plastic. He's like he's hit a steel wall. And, and Juice Robinson, he's got the spray, spray. Spray it on his hand. Just spray it on his hand. That's a good. Yes. And that's what I would do. Are you a doctor, Capri? No, that's that's oh. cold. He should have sprayed it on the hand before that, Aubrey That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I would have had a load. Would it be a loaded fist? I mean, oh, come on. The, the belt. Oh, right. The, the ears and eyes. He's going to be seeing igloos. Rolls him. Two. Oh. 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 And it's. You know, Jay Briscoe always rooted for the underdog. He was a big supporter of Cheeseburger over the years. And, and, and Brandon Cutler, to me, shares a lot of similarities. The guy whose heart doesn't quit, the biggest heart. Is it bad the that, heart. that Juice got ice in his eyes? Uh, yeah. Oh, charging. Oh, goodness gracious. Bruce, come on. And Juice setting him up. And cannonball. Oh. That cannonball is a precursor. Juice is getting ready to take it home. Certainly is. Has Cutler, center of the ring. That's it. Plants him. Oh God, that landing. Directly on the crown of the head. Two, three. The winner of this match, Juice Robinson. And what a showing for Brandon Cutler on a night where anything is possible, where we're celebrating the life of Jay Briscoe. Almost picked up a victory by way of the cold spray that that protected face shield may have broken the hand. Juice Robinson probably should get an X-ray and MRI. Yeah, definitely needs to get some water in his eyes. It certainly does. does. <laughs> a Juice Robinson here tonight, your winner in a huge contest against Brandon Cutler. Oh man, Jay, Jay Briscoe, one of the greatest men that I've ever met in my whole life. You know, uh, upon hearing the sad news of the passing of Jay Briscoe, the first thing I could think about was realist. What a real person Jay Briscoe was. Not only was he a real person, he was a giving person. He was a loving person. He really worked hard for his family and for his friends. You know, uh, Jay and I started at ECWA uh, way back in the day with uh, Jim Kettner. Uh, we've been up and down on the road uh, with the Ring of Honor. Um, his family was my family. You know, his dad was my dad. His mom was my mom. You know, his kids were my kids. And, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart, uh, and, and, you know, this is really, really hard to do, but from the bottom of my heart, I want to wish my, you know, condolences to your wife, Jay, to your beautiful children, okay? I'm hoping for a speedy recovery uh, from both of them. Uh, your son uh, and, and your mom, your dad, and all of your fans and your friends throughout the wrestling industry. Jay, you're going to be missed tremendously and I had to come in this room and and share a testimony because you know being being in ring of honor wouldn't have ever been complete if you wasn't there you know and I'll always remember seeing your face whenever I walked into a locker room uh, with you knowing that I was going to be on the card you know you you were happier than happy could be you know so again you know uh, to the family friends and to the whole Pew and Briscoe family, my condolences and rest well, my friend. We're gonna miss you and I love you. Oh, what a treat we have here. You could say that again. I see what you did. This contest is set for one fall. Approach the ring. Yuka Sakazaki, Yuka Sakazaki, Yuka Sakazaki, Yuka Sakazaki. How are you dancing this fast? 
and her opponent, Sandra Moon. Sandra Moon stepping into the ring with a woman who's called her shot at Athena versus Yuka Sakazaki. Tokyo, Tokyo Joshi Pro. She is the current Princess of Princess Champion. Sakazaki is almost as fun as Sam Riccoboni. <laughs> Look at the, a little bit of a size difference, a strength difference here. Moon able maybe to outpower Sakazaki, but Sakazaki eh, looking for that wrist control like we saw in the pure contest. But that's the thing. Immediately, Moon went for that power advantage. But Sakazaki was able to uh, bring that away from her. Just like that, that movement there, oh. using her speed for the advantage. Sometimes a wrestler comes in, tries to impose their will, and you have the right technical wrestler that they're going against that's able to deflect that. You see that with Sakazaki. Oh. And Sakazaki, uh, really an AEW original. It's so fun to see her here in Ring of Honor, but a shot to the back of the head, shooting the half, covered. Oh, and almost the three. Hey, I like that from Sandra Moon, man. You hit somebody, you make that cover. You don't know if you've already had knocked out or whatever. I, I respect that. And rolls her up to two. Think back to double or nothing, the inaugural double or nothing of Sakazaki who competed. Ooh, wow, and that's the movement. The hips, the knees, the pounce. Wow, the bayonet. Two. Almost a very quick victory there. I tell you what, she hit her so many times in, in such a short amount of time. Those high impact strikes, you can see Moon reaching for her teeth there. And Sakazaki and Athena appear to. Being on a collision course as of late, but Sandra Moon might want to put her name in the hat here. Some great strikes cover. Two. A lot of things that Sandra Moon is doing right there with those deep covers, those deep hooks, dispersing her body weight perfectly. I like Sandra Moon. I do too. Trapping the arm up and over. Yuka Sakazaki. A wrist lock into a hammer lock. <laughs> Sakazaki so whoa. fast whoa, whoa. and strong. And no one home there. Ooh. Forearm connects. Off the ropes. Sakazaki puts wow. it down. Twisting brain buster. It's like the strength on, on display by Sakazaki. You, you just, Sakazaki, you just don't expect that from somebody that size. And again, trapping the wrist into the hammerlock yeah. position. Has more up. Moon up. And the spinning hammerlock. Goodness. Driving her down. Oh, and she's calling for it here. Up to the second rope on the outside, balancing. Whoa! Nice. Two, and the magical girl splash finishes. There's your winner, Ayuka Sakazaki. The magical girl with the magical girl splash, Yuka Sakazaki. Very impressive here, Capri. Yeah, she called a win. She said finish, and that was the finish, man. You can't, can't get any better than that. That was magical. Magic on display right there. Great win. And as we see, Sandra Moon. And, and how can you be mad? It's like Jay Briscoe with the big smile, lighting up every room you're in. She'll beat you down, but she'll smile at you when she does it. Code of Honor right here to Yuka Sakazaki with a tremendous victory over a very game. Sandra Moon here on the Jay Briscoe Celebration of Life.
again. The match that the Briscoes asked for at the beginning of tonight after attacking Santa and the Elves. They get the match against Claudio Castagnoli and Chris Hero right here in New York City. They're very upset after what happened last night in Hartford. And Chris Hero right in the center of the ring. Yeah, the debut in the corner in the suit. Larry Sweeney making his first appearance in Ring of Honor last night. Cosby the Briscoes, the matchup. And he is now, I guess, the agent of Chris Hero. He's handling his career here in Ring of Honor. Apparently his first act is to give the Briscoes one more shot against the Kings of Wrestling. One last time teaming up before Claudio Castagnoli heads to the WWE. Of course, Claudio wants to leave ROH on a high note. Wants a victory here against the Briscoes at the Manhattan Center. Chris Hero in control versus the Irish Whip. Mark Briscoe comes charging. Up and over, catches himself on the apron. Iron away on Chris Hero. Springboard roots out to the floor by Mark, wiping out Castagnoli. And a drop kick to the back by Jay. Right to the back of Chris Hero, didn't see it coming. Pulls into the center and goes for the cover. And Hero able to get his shoulder up. Come on, come on Hero, come on. You see Larry Sweeney on the outside barking orders at his protege, Chris Hero. So the Briscoes aren't able to defeat the Kings of Wrestling here tonight in their final appearance as a team in Ring of Honor. They're never going to be able to say that they got a victory against the Kings of Wrestling. The former ROH World Tag Team Champions are Chris Hero and Claudio Castagnoli. This double team work there from the Briscoes, former champions themselves. Any kick to the head of Chris Hero able to make the tag though, but Castagnoli caught with a series of chops. Taken into the corner. Look at the elevation on that hip toss. Huge peel right into the lights, all the way across the ring. Nice vertical suplex floats over to cover. Another near fall for the Briscoes for a scoop and a hard slam here. Another near fall, able to get two. Passing all the way back to his feet, caught with a forearm, make it a second. Another light suplex and a bridge. Briscoe's looking good here in the early going. Mark Briscoe just trying to work over Claudio Castagnoli, nice knee right there, but keeping him in his own corner. Firing away on the chest of Castagnoli. Chops and forearm shots, knocks him in the corner, tags in Brother Jay. Another knife edge chop continuing the assault on the chest of Claudio Castagnoli. Snaps him over with a suplex. And another cover. Can't keep Castagnoli down, they're looking to wear him out. Good job by the Briscoes, keeping the big man off of his feet. The ropes he goes, ducks the clothesline. There's a tag right there. Chris Hero, the legal man, and connects with the drop kick. Castagnoli able to hold him in position for just those few seconds as Hero was able to connect. Your fall by Hero, able to get two. Drop to the chest from Hero. Elevates him on his shoulders, takes him to the far corner, and dumps him. him down. And now Hero trying to cut the ring in half. No double team work from the Kings of Wrestling. One, two, two. Two count from Castagnoli. And the Kings are starting to assert themselves here. Snap mare off the ropes goes Castagnoli. Driving the forearm between the shoulder blades. Cover! Those the Kings of Wrestling were on CZW's side in the ROH versus CZW war here in 2006. Double big boot. Sending them right down to the canvas. Castagnoli, the turncoat, turned on Ring of Honor and sided with Hero in that crazy six-man fight at the 100th show. Of course, it was right here in Manhattan, at the Manhattan Center, that they were able to win the ROH World Tag Team titles from Austin Aries and Roderick Strong, putting an end to their nine month reign as champions. Trying to make the tag, Hero cuts him off, little way slam. Cover! 
And again, only able to get two. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli would love to have the last laugh by winning his final ROH matchup here this evening. More unique strategy from the Kings of Wrestling, driving him into the turnbuckle back first. Crossing the arms there, losing his balance as they drove him into the corner. Another wicked uppercut, and another cover. As the Briscoes return to Ring of Honor at the fourth anniversary show after a lengthy absence and really made an impact, including a series of matches against former champions Austin Aries and Roderick Strong, match of the year candidate at Unified. And they took Kenta and Marafuji to the limit at Glory by Honor 5, night one. Laid vertical suplex by Castagnoli. All the blood rushing to his head nips up. Another near fall. Showing his cockiness right there. Frequent tags from the Kings of Wrestling. Keeping the fresh man in the ring as they work over Jay Briscoe. Hard boot to the chest by Hero, sizing him up now, right hand to the top of the head. Forearm thrust. Jay slumped over that second rope. Series of karate thrusts to the chest and a forearm right to the bridge of the nose. Real, really working him over in the corner. Pulls him to the center. Hard strike, but Jay Briscoe firing back with one of his own. Hard exchange from these two men. Going toe to toe right in the center. Jay though getting the best of it. Fisherman Buster right on his head. Hero makes the tag. In comes Castagnoli once again. Preventing the Briscoes from making a tag themselves. No, back drops Castagnoli. Uh, but Hero on the outside drags Mark to the floor and prevents the tag. Uh, right as he was about to make the tag, Hero there to pull him off the apron and prevent the tag from being made. Jay Briscoe getting worked over in the corner again, this time by Claudio Castagnoli. Boot to the midsection after that forearm uppercut. Another tag, Chris Hero back in. Of course, aside from those matches against Aries and Roderick Strong, some memorable brawls with the Briscoes, taking on Samoa Joe and Homicide, back at Motor City Madness as well as Dethrone. And all these memorable, all these high impact matches in 2006, match of the year candidates, but the Briscoes were not able to win the tag team championships during 2006. 2007 will be their year, but they're in trouble right here. Another tag and a drop kick to the side of the face of Jay Briscoe by Claudio Castagnoli. Cover! And again, Jay able to kick out. He has taken an awful lot of punishment as Larry Sweeney, Chris Hero's agent, looks very pleased out on the floor. As long as he just stands there looking pleased and doesn't physically get involved in this matchup here tonight. And Larry Sweeney in the corner acting as an agent for Chris Hero is perfectly fine to the midsection, another double team move here by the Kings of Wrestling. Elevating Jay Briscoe up, he drives the knee, and a double DDT! What a show of strength right there from Jay Briscoe, and there's the tag! Mark Briscoe, this drop dropkick for Castagnoli. Big back body drop for Hero. Forearm shot in the corner on Castagnoli by Mark, reversal though, puts on a break, and a forearm right to the jaw. Chris Hero able to fire away on Mark Briscoe. Reversal of the Irish whip, ducks his head and pays the price. Hero off the ropes, gets caught. And tossed overhead with the suplex. A little bit of look at the uh, dental work of Mark Briscoe right there before going for the cover. Can't keep him down for three. Hero able to kick out just in time. That slight delay may have cost Mark Briscoe. Springboard's off the top and right across the knees. Hero able to get the knees up and drives it right to the chest of Mark Briscoe. The same thing that happened last night. Hero had it scouted and was able to get the knees up. And for the Ricola bomb. Crosses those arms. Sit up, power bomb. Only two. Couldn't put him away. That move has finished off many men here in ROH. Claudio thought he had him there, disgusted with the referee a little bit. Back to his feet, Mark with the reversal into the corner goes Castagnoli. Runs into the boot, but a right hand catches Castagnoli, and there's the tag to Brother Jay. So a little bit of time to catch his breath, regain his bearings on the apron, and now firing away on double C. Lord Buster, cover. Only two. 
two. And driving Castagnoli face first with the canvas, able to kick out. Podio puts on the brakes, has him up on his back. Ransom face first into the canvas and makes the tag to Chris Hero. Hero all the way across the ring he comes. Brings himself back in. And connects with the big boot to the side of the face. Bravat drives him out of the corner. Cover. Broken up. Not able to make the save after that flip off the top from the cravat. Hero still all over Jay. Hey, Fed's chop. Brings him out of the corner, hard to the buckle. Hero tries to get up ahead of steam and runs into a boot. It's a carry from Castagnoli. All the way up top he goes. Hero up top. Superplex and a big splash. Cover! And again, Mark able to make the save. Great double team work from the Kings of Wrestling. Larry Sweeney looking frustrated in the corner. But they're not able to finish off the Briscoe. And he only tags back in. Up the cut from double C, places him up top. Mark coming to the aid of his brother. All four men on one corner steps to throw to Hero. Double teamwork coming from the Briscoes. Castagnoli elevated. But Chris Hero making the save for his partner from the floor. All four men back inside the ring now. Some unique strategy from the Kings of Wrestling. Look at the show of power. Can't believe that that didn't finish him off. Sweetie can't believe it. Chris Hero with Jay Briscoe now. This is awesome. This is awesome. At least suplex, but Mark catches him with the spin kick right on the chin. European uppercut from Castagnoli. Big, big, big boot. Takes Castagnoli down. Boot from Hero. This hero very happy with himself, but right into the J driller! Come on, come on. 
Kelly barely getting that shoulder up. Somehow able to get that shoulder up in the nick of time. Look at Hero just dragging himself to the corner, using the ropes. Can't even make it to his feet. It's like a car wreck. All four men, very high impact wrestling. All four men feeling the effects. There's the tag. Four arm strike from Hero. Jay Briscoe fires back with one of his own. Exchange in the middle of the ring. Right hands back and forth from Jay and Hero. Forearm shots. Neither men willing to go down. Hero digs down, but Jay fires right back. What is keeping these guys on their feet? Larry Sweeney up on the ring apron, taking the attention of the referee. Bad timing on the Kings and Wrestling's part. He just hit his own man. Castagnoli sent to the floor. What happened? Mark pushed Hero into the line of fire. The Halliburton upside the head, and now the rest goes. and I feel like a lot of my colleagues don't. Uh, that's been the sentiment today. Uh, we all kind of found out on the way here and it was a very, I want to say awkward flight because I think everybody that met Jay knew how genuine he was and um, what a good heart he had. And it's just, it all hit us very hard because you always say, okay, see, okay, see you next time, and you expect that to happen. So when it doesn't, it's just even worse because there's so many things you may wanted to tell the person, uh, you may have wanted to say, and I think that's the case for, for a lot of us. Um, it certainly has been for me because I haven't seen Jay in about 10 years, and when we searched for the first time, it was just the same that it has been uh, 10 years ago when we were married uh, with the Kings of Wrestling, me and Chris Hero and, you know, Mark and Jay for over a year in this super bloody feud in Ring of Honor that uh, was so much fun. I have such full memories of some of my favorite tag matches. Um, just the fact at how good you guys were in the ring and how much fun outside. Uh, one of the nicest guys you'll meet outside of the ring, one of the scariest guys once the music hit. Um, and it was just like we were, you know, back in our 20s, just trying to have as much fun as we can, get better and everything. And that's just a testament to um, your integrity and your heart and the kind of person that you are. You always try to um, improve, get better, and we're always warm with a smile. It's always, there was, you couldn't be in a bad mood being around Jay. He was just always happy, infectious laugh, just having a good time. It just, I remember uh, at the, after the last final battle, uh, we would just sit in a locker room. Uh, you, me, Mark, Mark's wife, you would just sit and talk uh, about your kids. About, about the farm, about the good old days, about, uh, you know, when we're just trying to make a name and ring of honor to now, when we're still trying to do the same, essentially. And it's, it's heartbreaking that I can never talk to you again, but I am very, very gracious that I got to share uh, those moments with you, that I got to share the ring with you. Um, I think those matches and during that time, we were all so hungry. We were all just trying to get better and I learned so much from you and your brother. And every time I watch those matches back and I watch the promos for it and everything, uh, it, just, it just brings a smile to my face. And 
I think that's how we should remember people for with a smile and with a lot of uh, you know gratefulness that we were able to share parts of our lives with them and I'm extremely extremely happy and extremely grateful that I got to share part of my life with you and part of our journey together and um, you know I hope I hope your family is doing, is doing well my you know thoughts and prayers go out to them uh, during this extremely difficult time and obviously Mark as well and your dad Papa Briscoe and Mama Briscoe who one of my favorite matches was um, 2010 final battle and it was you guys F family Briscoe with Papa Briscoe against uh, me Chris Hagedorn and Sarah Ringside it was just it was just a fun fun match and probably one of my favorites in Ring of Honor because Every time we stepped in the room, you guys, it was awesome. And every time talking after, before, whatever, it was always smiles. It was always a good time. And yeah, I'm just extremely happy that uh, I was able to be part of that. And I'm very sad that you're not here with us anymore and I can't hear your laugh and I can't hear your voice. So I'll miss you. Main event time here on the Jay Briscoe Celebration of Life 2023. That's <laughs> hot. The heat from the flames of the fallen angel. Grace, I don't want to go to hell. That was hot, bro. <laughs> now, Christopher Daniels. Former Ring of Honor World Champion. The first to complete the Grand Slam. The world title, television title, tag team title, and six man title. Here tonight on a celebration of one of his greatest foes. A man who was in the very first main event of the first Ring of Honor event. He tonight will challenge the 38th Ring of Honor World Champion. In Arlington, Texas, Caprice, you and I were both there when the Swiss Superman ascended to the top of the Ring of Honor mountain once more. For the second time, Claudio Castagnoli became the Ring of Honor World Champion, defeating Chris Jericho via referee stoppage by tap out yeah. in the big swing. The big swing, man. That was 30 something rotations with a grown man to win the Ring of Honor title back. An incredible match that was, and an incredible bout we have here with the Ring of Honor World Championship on the line. For our official introductions to our main event, we turn now to Justin Roberts to introduce our competitor. Ladies and gentlemen, your main event tonight set for one fall with a 60-minute time limit is for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Introducing the challenger from Southern California, weighing 215 pounds, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. And his opponent from Lucerne, Switzerland, weighing 232 pounds, he is the reigning and defending Ring of Honor, World Champion, Claudio Castagnoli. Your referee, Paul Turner. Referee Paul Turner, a Ring of Honor yeah, yeah. original. So many, so many years of Ring of Honor in that ring. So many years with Jay Briscoe as well. Yeah. As we kick things off, we start the match, we begin the match with the Code of Honor. The Code of Honor is adhered to two Ring of Honor World Champions. The reigning and defending champion, Claudia, oh, into Ooh. the duck walk there. Getting, 
Getting Daniels to cover. That duck walk there is a practice in wrestling where you try to get a shot in. Right there, you're getting, that, getting his legs ready for a shot, single leg, double leg. It's a lot of athletes use lose that movement. For Claudio to still have that movement, it shows he had so much inside of him. These two men have their extensive histories with one another in Ring of Honor, including Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel defeating the Kings of Wrestling in 2006. The Kings of Wrestling versus the Briscoes, those yes. wars. Absolutely. As we think about how Christopher Daniels got to the Ring of Honor World Championship, it was by defeating Jay Briscoe yep. to win the Decade of Excellence tournament to earn himself a shot against the then champion Adam Cole. If you think about how Claudio had the record setting reign and run with Chris Hero and the Kings of Wrestling. It was because of matches against the Briscoes, numerous defenses, who set the record at that time for longest reign as the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Well, anytime you talk about tag team wrestling and Ring of Honor, you're definitely going to have the, the Briscoes somewhere there in the picture. I mean, 13-time World Tag Team Champions. I would argue the undisputed greatest tag team in the history of Ring of Honor. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. As Christopher Daniels now with the side headlock here. As you see, Claudio Castagnoli now able to get back to his feet. Nice drop down. The crowd chanting SCU. A, a, another foe of the Briscoe. Shoulder tackle. Sands Daniels down. Cover here. One. One. Think back to the ladder war. You and I both called it. It was at Final Battle 2018, the main event. No. Just the way that uh, Claudio had Christopher's hands trapped there. And it's and he's restricting the movement. You're absolutely yeah. right. There's so many things that Claudio does well. It's the little things that he does. The wrist control, the movements that you just don't see. Ah, unless it's explained. Nice deep arm drag in the way Christopher Daniels was able to hold on to it. That means he wants to stay in control of Claudio. He has him down. He wants to keep him down. And he's using a lot of Claudio's movement against Claudio at this point, Caprice. Well, that's judo, and that's smart, and that's uh, experience from Christopher Daniels. Now off the ropes, nice drop down there. And Daniels caught. This time by Claudio, the inhuman strength, the superhuman strength. Claudio lifted him up with his shoulders. He couldn't even get his arms around. To grab the inside, face on the way down, hits the apron. Daniels now down to the outside. Claudio Castagnoli. As we celebrate the life of Jay Briscoe, Ring of Honor World Championship on the line, a title that Jay Briscoe held twice. A two year period where Jay Briscoe was not pinned or submitted or defeated. You see here, Claudio was letting a rope down for Christopher to come in, but uh, Daniels said, you know, I'm not going to take that way, I'm going to take my own way in. It's, it's resetting his own momentum. And he went right to the middle of the ring to gain the center of attention, to gain that middle ground in wrestling. We have a wrist lock here. It's Claudio trying to pop out of it, use that movement again. If he's not careful, though, Daniels has been so smart this match, he's been using that movement against him. Yeah, exactly. Daniels can go right back for that wrist control. Ooh, wow! wow. Forearm shot delivers across the jaw, knocking Daniels down. Yeah. Oh. Hey, see his face ricocheting off that turnbuckle. How would you hit me? Well, that's a question I've often asked of those that try and strike with Claudio. Swing and a miss. Ooh, and, and this rope dope is working now, Caprice. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's look like a butterfly sting like a bee. Big clothesline there from Christopher Daniels. We saw the XXX on the back of the trunks of Christopher Daniels. There you see that represents 30 years in professional wrestling. That's what that represents? Yes, sir. Okay. Previously said XXIX, which is 29. Oh, big night pitch chop there. I knew that. I was just making sure the fans. Stereo chance, Colin Angel, Claudio. Crowd evenly split here as we celebrate the life, the career of the man, Jay Briscoe. Cover there. And Daniels has wrestled almost a perfect match, and he almost needs to 
with, with a man who has very few weaknesses like Claudio. What, what he's trying to do is neutralize Claudio, keeping him on the mat while he's down there doing as much as he can to exhaust the condition of Claudio. There's nobody conditioned like Claudio on his whole roster, man. But to be as big as he is and conditioned the way he is, when you get him down, you have to keep him down as long as you can. And it's very fitting that we celebrate the life of a former Ring of Honor world champion, former Ring of Honor tag team champion with, with two men that have, have had those same accomplishments, two men that have went to war with Jay Briscoe on a night like this. It is Claudio who gets the advantage here. Big back body drop. It's one thing good. Oh. And the STO into the Koji clutch. Can he, can he lock it in? He's, he's, he's got that cap just under the jaw. Yeah, he's trying to clasp it. He's dead center as well. Uh, no. Claudio may be in trouble here. He's got to swing those hips out, I think. If you piss it, you can, you can, you can stack them. Yep. Two. But he's, he's cut down the wind. He slowed the wind. And Daniels has been on point. Absolutely on point. It's a game plan that you walk in on. And when it works to perfection. Oh my God, it's the second time he's hit the ropes. That steel cable with the throw, the second time he's done this. And Daniels continues to work on the wind of the champion. And I don't mean to be dense here, I don't mean to be pedantic, but it, it, if he can stop Claudio from breathing, yeah. that is going to eliminate everything. It's gonna slow down the way the oxygen gets to the muscles. It's gonna slow down his legs, his arms. It's gonna slow down the shoulders that he used to, to press with raw force earlier. That's just a great game plan, Rick and Bonnie. You're, you're, you're eliminating the oxygen of the big man, making it hard for him to breathe, hard to breathe, had to, hard to think. Yeah, you see him pointing to, he's complaining to the referee. Which is unlike Claudio. Period. He, he is inside the mind of Claudio, and Claudio knows he's in trouble right now. And the sleeper hold, I, Absolutely love what Daniels is yeah, doing right he's, here. He's definitely going against the wind of Claudio, trying to cut him down, and, and it's working. It's working. It's working to perfection. And now on the back of Claudio, it is Daniels, but Claudio trying to power up. He has one knee out from under him. I don't know if he should try to use power in this situation. And uh, you can see him try to use that power, and Daniels was able to bring him right back down, as low as he is now, in that collapsed position. And Claudio has to be careful here. He's, you see the vascularity, the, the, you see the blood flow slowing down, which is not a good sign. Those muscles aren't getting as much oxygen as they were, and Claudio has to make a fight or flight decision here. He's choosing to fight. Back to his feet, it's Claudio sending Daniels into the corner. Out of desperation, slams into that corner, and that was all he needed for Daniels to break free. But and Daniels resets and grabs him again, headed right back to cut off the oxygen of the champion. It's working, you see the veins hey. in Claudio's head. That's the oxygen searching, searching for a place to go and it's trapped. The hey. blood, look at it right there, look at his head. And it's amazing, this battle between two of the all-time great Ring of Honor world champions right here, celebrating the life of one of the greatest competitors in the history of Ring of Honor, Jay Briscoe. A match befitting of a tribute, a celebration of the life of Jay Briscoe, two times over the world champion, 13 times tag team champion, and two of the best Ring of Honor has ever had to offer. Getting it on in the center of the ring. Claudio stacks oh. over, drives Daniels down. Claudio needed that suplex. He needed that. Can't capitalize on it, but he will have time to recover. He will have time to separate, regain, and replan. And let's see what he does with this. And you see his head literally changing colors yeah. as the oxygen returning to his skull. He, he's getting breath back to the brain. It's going to help him think. It's going to help him game plan. But is it too late? Is it too late? Has Daniels turned the corner? It's never too late. It's never too late. Like Bonnie, he's a champion. That's what champions are made of. And Daniels delivering. And Daniels, who has the one-on-one -on -one career advantage against Claudio Castagnoli coming into this bout, who's won their first bout and their last bout against one another. Claudio fighting back. And with those uppercuts, now Irish whip into the corner. It's Claudio. God, the way he follows you in and it gives you no time to recover. And again. Wow. He could do that all night long if he wanted to. So much he's taking out of Daniels right now. And he's got to be careful because if he doesn't break at five, he'll get disqualified. He exhausted all of that. Oh my God. And he's going right back for it. 
And this is not insult to injury. This is him knowing Daniels is a top tier, top flight competitor. That's right, when you have him real and you do what you need to do. Two and two. Two count there. Two count there in this battle between two of the very best Ring of Honor World Champions we've seen on a night where we're celebrating a Hall of Famer, a first ballot Hall of Famer in Ring of Honor, Jay Briscoe, two men that have gone to war inside the squared circle with Jay Briscoe. He's trying for that, for that giant swing. Yes, sir. Oh, back, back to the throat. And rolls up Claudio, too. I, I don't know. It may have looked like he grabbed some handful of the tights there. Daniel's not not below that. I was getting ready to say, you know, Daniel's kind of known for that. Daniel's do what he needs to do to get the win and apologize later. And that high chop up in the throat. And swinging down. Variation of the complete shot. Hooks the leg. Two. You know, there's video games we can buy. You play with the rest of the video games. You work on the body part and it wears you down. He's been working on that neck area the whole time. You will have to think that the neck and the head area of Claudio is red right now. And he's calling his shot here. The move that captured him. The Ring of Honor World Championship. The best move Saul ever. Claudio, though, breaking the grasp. He likes that Uranagi. He will not let Daniels get it there. Big boot. Best, Best Musa ever. ever! Catches him. Two from a standing position. Only gets two. Daniels back to his feet right away. It's Daniels now. Calling for the Angels' wings. Calling for the Angels' wings here. We get up a new champion. Daniels maybe become a two-time Ring of Honor World Champion. Blocked it. The strength on display of the champion. It's not finished yet. Walking with him. Daniels is going to reset. Up and over. And now Claudio has the ankles. Can he get both? No, Daniels able to fight out of it. Daniels is so smart. Pop oh, up. Got him. The lights are out. Two. Ooh. Pop up, uppercut. Connecting, delivering. See Daniels trying to get back to his feet, but his legs are not cooperating. The damage is done on the challenger, and the champion is up on his feet. But can the champion push through? You see him still grabbing for the throat. And on a night where the fans are expressing their deepest adoration, their admiration, they want to see the swing. But I don't know how smart this is. Because this is going to take oxygen. It's going to take power. Three. But it's working here. This is all it's going to take. The joints are pulling. The ligaments are loosening. And at the count of 10, Claudio letting Daniels go. And a neutralizer. Oh, change his mind. That might cost him. You can't change your mind. You butterfly the arms. And it's the Jay Driller. Jay Driller plants down. Daniels. Two. Got wow. The winner of this match and still Ring of Honor World Champion, Claudio Castagnoli. The embrace between the champion and the official Paul Turner, who has called more Jay Briscoe bounce than any referee. Jay Driller for the win. Wow. The, the move that Jay Briscoe himself captured and defended the Ring of Honor World the Tag Team titles with for 21 years, Caprice. Yeah, I've been big for that Jay Driller more times than I want to admit. <laughs> Reach for the sky. Outstretch ah, hand. Claudio Castagnoli. Christopher Daniels. A match befitting of a celebration of one of the great stars, one of the great people in Ring of Honor history. Fans, we thank you so much for joining us here on the Celebration of Life. For Caprice Coleman, I'm Ian Riccaboni. Happy wrestling, everybody. We love you, Jay.